Hey, 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 everybody, what's going on? Oh, man, Kevin's big hair's not set up yet. Welcome to Climbing the Ladder, episode 46. I'm your host, Chan Man V, and uh, joining me as always is John Clark. How's it going, John? It's it's going great. How are you? Good, good. I got to set up Kevin's camera in just a sec, but let me do an intro first. Uh, so, guys, I, you know, I've been looking forward to doing this episode for a while now, and um, we don't get a chance to you know kind of do these type of more spotlight uh, episodes because uh, you know in the past we, we've had a lot of high profile folks come on we're, we're you know really lucky to have those folks come on and 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 do that sort of thing but um you know today is always one of these episodes that i really want to oh man hold on a second oh <laughs> uh sorry about that folks uh we, we've been wanting to do this for a while, and actually we want to thank Carlton for it. He gave us the idea, uh, but it's definitely something that's really important in eSports, and it's not talked about enough, uh, is the, the photography that's being uh, done at all of these live events. I mean, all these great pictures that come out of these events, uh, somebody's taken them, and uh, we have some of them here today to kind of talk about a little bit about, about that. Are you back, Chris? Yeah, Is sorry about that, guys. Crazy. This is crazy. I'm lost already. Crazy, craziness always, always around here. But um, yeah, so it, you know, I I uh, want to thank obviously one of our guests, Carlton, here for really seeding this idea. And uh, you know, today we're we're actually going to make it come into fruition. And yeah, so esports photography. I mean, I feel like it's something that that needs to be brought to light a little bit more. It's it's not one of these things that I think we take for granted, and in a lot of ways, you know, these top photographers don't are not getting even compensated correctly. You know, so lots of things to talk about today. But uh, let me introduce our guests. You can kind of see our guests right now, but we got like four guests, which is, I think is the most guests we've ever had, right, John? Right. <laughs> so let me give a brief introduction, then we'll have these guys kind of talk a little bit more, and you know, give you even more in depth history, but. First off, we have a uh, esports photographer who's recently just gotten back from Korea, taking lots of great pics from Korea and uh, Pro League and all those guys, and uh, most recently CSL. And you guys might you guys might have seen his Asian man can't jump picture of uh, <laughs> Suppy recently, <laughs> but Mr. Carlton Viener, what's going on, bud? Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, next up, we have a professional photographer. She she you know she takes uh, she she's a photographer like for a living, and uh, she also does a lot of esports uh, events like WCS and DreamHack and a lot of the European events over there. She's been associated with DreamHack for quite some time now, and uh, you know lots and lots of pics that we've seen on Reddit and TL have come from Helena, and you just probably had, didn't know that until <laughs> but you'll you'll know today. You know we're going to be showing some of the photos. Um, but yeah, I just want to welcome Helena Christensen to the show. Hey, Helena, how's it going? Hey. Uh, third, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got Mr. Kevin Chang. going to mix it up here. Mr. Kevin Chang, every, all you guys know him as Silverfire. He's uh, the photographer most associated with, uh, you know, doing all, most of the TL photography, right? You and you and Rich, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, let me fix the... Actually, uh, Rich, is, Rich is still doing it a lot, but uh, he, he's in New York, so he gets to do a lot of the uh, MLG arenas and stuff as well. Awesome, yeah. Um, you know, Kevin's done a lot, a lot of work at uh, the MLGs and the IPLs and and uh, NESL too, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Sorry, I'm fixing this region as, as we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> I see you doing that on the other feet. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, and then lastly, we coming welcoming back to we, I want to welcome you back to the show because she's been on here in the past. Uh, more regards as being a, a team owner than being a photographer. So um, it's going to be cool having you actually talk about talk about your expertise here, <laughs> which is going to be a well, treat. It, let's yeah. clarify that at least at least in our little world, yeah. she's seen more as a team. Uh, well, I mean, last time owner. she was on the show, we were you know it, we were. You know, asking her more stuff about being a team owner than, than a photographer. But she's a well renowned fashion photographer. I mean, you might know a lot of her work in Deviant Art. She's won awards like El Singapore's 2011 Photographer of the Year. And she's had ex exhibitions of her work all over the world. You can look her up on Wikipedia if you'd like. <laughs> but uh, I want to welcome uh, Zhang Jingna to the show. And you guys might know her also as Z Motion. Yes. Thanks for having me back. You're welcome, and you know, pleasure having you on 
Um, but yeah, so want to get started here. Um, kind of want to just jump in. Uh, you guys catch the Vengeance stuff like uh, that was just happening just now, the Vengeance trailer. Yep. Any of you guys see that? I watched it. Yeah, I think me and you were the only person <laughs> that might have watched it. <laughs> Pretty good. I hope one day. I hope one day Blizzard makes a a, a movie. Even like a 30 minute movie or a 45 right. minute movie. I think movie. everyone wishes they could. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. That's exactly be... what I thought when I saw the first trailer for Hot. So I was just like, this, that movie form would be so epic. What, I mean, wouldn't it be an awesome marketing tool, too? I mean, yeah, it'd be amazing, I, right? I think so. Gosh, that'd be so great. Um, but yeah, so anyways, that's about the extent of the news we'll be doing today, guys. So. Uh... <laughs> Because we have four guests. Yes, because we have four guests. That's right. And uh, you know, in photography, we just want to get as much time as we can, you know, to talk about this. So, um, so okay. So I kind of want to start the show by, by really, you know, having you guys talk a little bit more about your um, esports photography experience, or even just, you know, maybe a little bit of background. Maybe like two minutes each, if that sounds good with you guys. And what I'm going to do is while, while you guys talk, I'm going to show some of y'all's work in, uh, in this new overlay that we have. So we really want to kind of associate these picks with you guys like tonight, today. So um, why don't we start with, uh, we'll start with you, Carlton. We'll kind of go in the same order I introduced you guys. And um, yeah, why don't you give a little bit of background uh, from, uh, I guess, your experience with photography? Um, I started off shooting stuff, shooting in 2007. Um, shot bands and concerts primarily. Oops, uh, I had a lot of friends that were in bands, Where so that's kind of just like Jeez. what I kind of <laughs> navigated to. Um, and I like toured with some bands. I shot some concerts, like uh, like festivals and stuff internationally. And then once like the Wings of Liberty beta came out, I started playing that, and I was like, I really don't have time to play it. And I tried telling my friend, I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time because if I play it, I'm gonna want to play all the time. And then sure enough, I started playing and played constantly, nonstop never had time to go to shows anymore and then I was like well if I'm getting this involved in it I should start going to events and seeing what seeing what's going on there so the first event I would plan on going to was MLG Anaheim in 2011 uh, but I couldn't wind up making it so really the next local event after that was NASL season 2 finals so that's what I decided to go to for my first event and I shot that and then I was like oh this is pretty cool I really like doing this so uh, last year, I went to all four MLGs. I went to Columbus, Anaheim, Raleigh, Dallas. I went to both IPLs uh, in Vegas. I went to NSL Season 4 Finals. I shot um, pretty much every every StarCraft LAN in Southern California, at least. And then i uh, been shooting a little bit of like other, other stuff, too, trying to get kind of branch out. Just I like the scene so much. So that's what I was up to last year. And then I just got back from Korea. I went to Korea for two weeks uh, to shoot Pro League and shoot GSL. Kind of just for fun as a project to see what I could kind of come up with. So I got a lot of shots out of that. It was a lot of fun. Saw some friends that I had made here over How the How long passion. were you there for? Uh, it was like 12 days. Okay. Total. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty so good. So every day time. I was there, every day I was there was either GSL or Pro League every single day. Right. And again, guys, right now I'm, uh, I'm just kind of cycling through a bunch of picks that, that Carlton has did done over fit, the years. Did you foot the bill on all of these? Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. We'll remember that for later in the yeah. conversation. Yeah, we'll definitely remember that <laughs> for later. Uh, okay, so uh, why don't we have uh, Helena? Um, you want to talk a little bit about your your uh, experience with photography? Yeah, sure. Um, I bought my first camera in 2008. Um, I've done a lot of stuff. Right now I'm working with taking mostly photos of babies, newborns, weddings, and portraits in general. And I have a pretty long background in esports, or I should say, I have a long background in DreamHack. I've been doing DreamHack as a volunteer since 2004, and kind of slipped into esports almost by mistake, but I love it. So <laughs> since fall 2011, I've been doing esports photography. Talk about like talk about just slipping into esports by accident. What do you mean by yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I kind of stopped working for the volunteer team that I used to be in, didn't know where to go, uh, kind of found the photography team at DreamHack and uh, I was like, okay, I'll join them and I did and the team leader quit three weeks before uh, DreamHack Winter 2011. Uh, so they asked me if I could lead it and it was like me and 10 other photographers and I was like, yeah, sure, I can be the leader. Uh, I don't know anything about esports or the 11 tournaments that we'll have, 
but sure, <laughs> I'll I'll try to learn. So I tried. It was like going to the Olympics and trying to teach to learn every sport they have. But I think it worked out okay. Okay, great. Yeah, just kind of going through some of these. Sorry, I'm kind of having to do the screen regions at the same time so we okay. could start it, start on time. It's kind of the, the <laughs> price we paid for that. But going through a lot of these images and, you know, again, like there's a lot of these images that I think we've seen in the you know last few months that, you know, again, I don't think a lot of people knew that you shot. Like the Stefano one and, man, what is this, what is this crazy sexy picture of Bling here? I mean, that, that just like throws me off every time I see it. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun shooting him. He, I was like, <laughs> oh, I bet it was. <laughs> please give me a pose that eSport hasn't seen before. And he's like, sure. And then he gave me three photos in like two seconds. And I'm like, okay, th fine, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just kind of finishing going through some of this reel here. Good stuff. Good stuff for sure. Uh, Kevin, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, uh, I'm actually kind of a newcomer to eSports as well because I started shooting for Team Liquid only la uh in 2011, I started with MLG Providence, and I've been pretty much every single MLG since and IPL and ASL, all those things. And uh, I mean, before that, I was I shot a couple sports when when I was in college, just because my friends were on the uh, basketball team at UC Davis. But then um, after that, I shot concerts for a couple of years, still do for uh, all K-pop as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <funny. laughs> and now, now concerts are concerts. They're they're all fun. I mean, it, photography is just a for me. It's a challenge. And uh, you, that, and you and you don't do f photography for full time right now, right? No, I do not. I'm actually okay. a software engineer. I'm at work right now. But you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a side thing for me. So mm -hmm. I, mean, it, I think I'm the only one only one out here where. Photography isn't some sort of primary breadwinner for me. Yeah, and one of the things we'll talk about is like you know hoping to get to the point where it can be a primary breadwinner if that's you know what you choose to do. All right, lastly, Miss Jin over there, Jin Na, you want to talk a little bit about your your long history with photography? <laughs> well, um, so I've been doing photography for seven years, and. Esports, I guess I was mostly active in 2011 and then some of 2012, a little bit less. Because um, uh, I have a team, Infinity 7. So when the team just started and we were active, um, you might know my player, well, X player now, <laughs> Crazy Moving, and then there's X Love, and um, Jacko used to be on the team. So I, I would travel to events with them, and at first it's just to um, take pictures of all players, but you know, after that, it's just kind of like, well, since I'm here, I might as well take pictures of everyone else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, why not, um, right? Yeah, and, and so it kind of just started from there. My first event was actually just um, the first NASL finals because I happened to be in the LA area. And um, met some really nice people there. I met Brent from ESFI. So yeah. later on, when I started going to events, I did some pictures for ESFI. And I think um, my most iconic picture in esports would are we talking about this later? Okay, should I say it now? Oh, you can say it now. You can say it now. Oh, okay. Oh, it's probably the one of um, Sean Day Nine at taking at MRG. Oh, let me the, find it. I have to find it now. Now you put me on the spot. Starcraft folder on the left hand side. Or Where? Somewhere. So I'm on your blog. Is it on your blog? I think it might be there. Yeah. Uh, which, which MLG is it? Um, Anaheim. This was Anaheim. Okay, it's not actually yeah. here, but it's oh, here. Let me just it's, find it. It's on Liquipedia for sure. Um, or you can look on I think Day Nine's Facebook page, maybe. Day Nine's Facebook page. Yeah, they're see. they're posting it in the chat. Let me find it. I, I want to yeah, I kind of want to get it too, just because yeah, it's 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 the pick that Forbes used too, right? So it's, yeah, um, yeah, that's right. So um, I mean, it's fun, and I guess I was. Right, kind of, um, or I, I guess um, this this will uh, come into topics Top that we're going to be covering later on. Yeah. That you know, getting to work with DSFI quite early on when they were starting to cover events and stuff, and just talking about crediting and and mm -hmm. things when you know there were no awareness about such stuff. So um, yeah, I don't know. I went to okay. a couple of events, NSLs, uh, a lot of MLGs because my teams were going. 
Um, and then I was at BlizzCon too, and uh, also took pictures for Red Bulls after I was gaming league um, when uh, Day Nine was there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's great to have you on too, just because you know having you contrast you know obviously an industry that that photography is like a huge huge part of right and, and fashion and, and you know basically what you do for uh do for a living and then having you contrast it with esports so it's gonna you know i think it's gonna be great for these upcoming topics that we're gonna be doing here um but yeah guys that's gonna so that's kind of a you know hopefully you guys got a chance to see some of the the, the work there and um you know we'll we'll kind of at least have some association now with uh, these these guys uh, but why don't we why don't we talk a little bit? Why don't we kind of segment into the first topic, which is um, talking about the importance and the value of, of photography in esports right now. Um, I, I think we should start off with just what's the perceived value. What you guys think is like the perceived value right now of, of photography, and then we'll we'll get into you know what our opinions are of what you know the value should be. Um, so let me start off with um, let's start with you. Carlton, like, what do, what do you think is the perceived value of photography right now? Uh, I mean, right now, I think, like, people like photos. They like looking at photos. Um, a lot of photos get, like, associated with events. Like, when I think of, like, a lot of the European events, like, I, I, I see Helena's photos. Like, the shots of Stavano, like, that's just, that photo, like, represents the event that it was taken at. And whenever I think about the event, I think about that photo. And I think for a lot of people, it kind of works that way. Um, I mean... I'm a visual guy myself, so it just everything I think of kind of works out that way. So, yeah. um, you, I mean, you go to the events, like you look at a lot of stuff, like Team Liquid's, like like the place to go to, like an events. Like, okay, well, MLG just happened today, so I'm going to go check out, you know, Kevin's pictures on Team Liquid and see what they look like, and you know, you can go to ESFI, like I shoot for ESFI, so you can go to ESFI and see the pictures and see what was going on at the event. It's a lot easier to see pictures sometimes than it is to see video. Plus the video, I mean, you're not going to see right right away anyway. Right, right. And by the way, guys, like once I kind of start these topics, you guys are free to just to jump in whenever. Um, it's not it's not so much as just like, you know, me asking one of you one at a time. It's going to be a little bit crazy, you know, today with six of us, but it's okay. That's kind of like the point of uh, just having a discussion. So, yeah, what, what are some of y'all's other thoughts? Um, Kevin, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's just as Carlton said. I mean, it it is a big deal with you know being able to just go on a site and get a quick overview of what's going on with it than just scrolling through a gallery of photos you know i mean it's it, it's a lot faster than having to wait for a video to play because you know you have to with video there's a the whole waiting time you know you have to wait for however long that video runs to go through all of the all of the content whereas galleries you really can just scan through and find all the uh, content you want just through the uh, thumbnails Yep. You know, and particularly so eye catching ones. Yeah, yeah, the, it's the instant gratification. Right, right. Uh, Helena, you know, Carlton mentioned one of your, you know, some of your your picks there that, like the Stefano picture, right? That was, I think everybody knows that picture and, and kind of associates that event with that picture. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, do you think, you know, obviously you're proud of that picture, right? And that a lot yeah. of people like, like it, but I mean, is it fair to say that not very many people knew you took that picture? Uh, yeah, I think that picture and also the GG, like the overview shot when I like climbed to the very top of the globe venue and shot down during the GG, I think that one was also retweeted like a million times uh, and barely no one knows I took it. At least like that, that's two of my favorite pics, pics ever and most people that have seen it never knew I took it, which kind of makes it suck a little but i still yeah. love the picture so it's really hard yeah uh, and that's you know I definitely we're going to be you know accrediting a lot of these picks are definitely going to be uh something we're going to talk in like really really short short period here um so jin or jingna what do you <laughs> think of just all that i mean what do you think of the fact that you know there's pictures out there that you know thousands of people are seeing and <laughs> you know the photographer is basically not getting much credit for it um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I mean, just to echo everyone else, um, I really do think that um, images help associate with a story and yeah. event. Mm -hmm. And um, most importantly, I think um, if you look at it from a very business point of view, it helps marketing. You know, mm -hmm. um, people are going to associate with the story much more if they can um, find themselves relating to the actual scenario of what happened at the event or um, other characters of who's being introduced. 
and um, people would be more into this piece of news, is you will be less dry, right? Reading mm -hmm. and yes. um, like I I did a photography for uh, EG when Huck joined um, the team, and I think we all agree that you know EG is a very good marketing company. <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, like I like um, Garfield understands the the value of you know, um, like these marketing materials, but I think a lot of other teams which um, don't yet understand or I guess have the resources to put in enough um, into marketing focuses don't know that um, pictures, you know, they're just like actually important. <laughs> yeah. Well, and is it so much that they don't realize that pictures are important or do, do they not realize All the creators, that? right? Yeah. The creator, yeah, because I mean, I don't think much of. Well, I mean, I haven't been um, really at events for a while now, but I think a lot of people don't pay the photographers that um, are contributing to articles right now. Am I right? Or at least it's like a really minimal token fee. And I mean, not not even just the problem of that is. Um, it's just that even getting credits, like we're all saying, that yeah. photographers are not even getting. If you look at major news articles and um, papers, all the photographers are credited in um, everything, you know, from like printed magazines to mm -hmm. online articles. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's because the, um, the industry is so young and so new, and there are just so many things that. Um, because yeah, it started by people. Yeah, sorry. I, mean, I was just going to say, like, let's imagine, let's imagine esports without photos, right? Right now, <laughs> what would it be like? I mean, honestly, like, I, I, like if we were to do that, I mean, what would it be like with TL? A lot of video. A lot of a video. Lot of video. Yeah. Or or screenshots of the game. Yeah. <laughs> screenshots of the game. Oh my god, that'd be I so think that's terrible. Cheating. I think that actually oh counts pictures. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think one of the things that that uh, a lot of people miss is that you know one picture can really tell a story that yeah. that um, you know video can't or written word can't and you know one of the things that we talk about a lot on this show John right is storytelling and really mm -hmm. telling you know kind of getting trying to emotion and that sort of thing from players and, and, and that sort of thing and you know we're always talking about casters talking about it or or you know things like that but you know that's the one thing the art of photography can do right it's just one pick and tell so many things and I don't you know. I think a lot of people just don't don't you know under, quite understand that yet. Um, would you guys? I mean, would you guys agree with that, Sam? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that links pretty. I mean, that links back pretty well with what Carlton you know said earlier about just you know being a, a picture being a good summation of an event, you know, yeah. or rather one crucial moment that just defines that event. So yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. So um, in regards to you know you you brought up EG uh, Jen. And you know, Alex, you know, understanding the value of photography, um, is it so much that it, it's a lot of folks that just don't really understand how they can use like you know these pictures, or is it that other folks just don't really respect the skill that's involved with you know photo you know just like high level photography? Like, do they just think that anybody can take these pics? So you know, they I, don't even pay much money for it. So yeah, I definitely think that is that is one of the beliefs is like um, oh. Oh, we have a friend or, you know, one of the writers can just take a picture with their phone or uh, just take a picture with their point and shoot. And I mean, like, I'm, I am not, like, discriminating against these things, but, like, good quality work is going to have, like, difference um, when, you, when you look at them and experience them, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you, like, you know, like, Day nine, like he gets hired for an event over, say, someone who who's like right. started yesterday. Um, there, there is there is a difference between like okay, like he has popularity, but you know there's professionalism, and there's quality that you know is guaranteed and is going to be delivered, and there's the um, viewer experience, right? right. And to be able to um, enjoy what he says because he knows how to engage the audience, you know, and so from like a completely. Um, uh, how should I put it nicely? If you have, um, I guess someone with... You don't have to put it nicely. 
If you have a new that is shitty, if you have me going and shooting like pictures, I mean, you can just say that. If you have someone who can't translate um, the vibrance of an event, then um, the the story falls away, right? Then then your pictures are not giving it the most that it can be. You know, you're not immortalizing those moments of you know when someone has an epic win, Um, those emotional moments when someone is like um, maybe in tears from losing, right? Yeah, I, I see this a lot, like um, because I'm a graphic designer, and and we've had these conversations in my in my courses where, you know, a lot of there's a lot of people out there that think they can use Photoshop, and um, <laughs> very similar to using a camera, right? And so a lot of these teams will find somebody uh, within esports that you know says, oh yeah, I know Photoshop, and and they'll put out some graphics and and listen I'm going to I'm taking classes still and I'm still learning all the all the time but a lot of these teams will just look to their buddy who who knows Photoshop and they'll put together you know a twitch background or something like that and I would say nine out of ten times you're gonna run into it where it just does not look professional it doesn't look right it doesn't have uh, the look that you were looking for, but the teams are like, oh, this is fine, we'll just go with it. So I think there's a lack of teams understanding the importance of quality. And then yeah. there is just, there's, and this is a, a problem in, in a lot of industries that are creative, like uh, photography and graphic design, is that there's always somebody else that says, oh, yeah, you know, I'll do that, I can do that. You know, I've taken a publishing class or I've taken a photography class, and I've got a pretty decent camera. And, um, you know they'll do it to next to nothing and one of the things that my one of the professors yeah. told me was that every time that I do that I'm uh, devaluing yep. the the industry of graphic design yeah. um, I need if I feel if I'm a professional and somebody's willing to pay me for it I should be willing to take it and um, that's, that's something familiar. of course I'm getting better at as well um, yeah, it's, sorry. go ahead it's, it's like I've told other people before I mean Part of, I mean, a big part is the experience because I will, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that all the auto modes on a camera can do like 80% of what, I mean, what a lot of photographers can do nowadays. I mean, it, it gets pretty close. Like the cameras are getting really smart and they can do a lot of, I mean, as low light technology gets better and all that, they can start doing a lot of what we can do, you know, easily. But it's that last 20%, you know, that really takes years of experience in the field that you're you're working in, you know, to actually deliver that sort of, those sorts of results. Yeah, uh, Helena, I kind of want to ask you, given that you know you've sh- you do a lot of work with you know families, babies, weddings, that that type of thing, and I know firsthand experience that you know for my family photos, I go and pay somebody like you know six hundred, seven hundred dollars for you know forty five minutes an hour session, and and then pay prints on top of that. Okay, so I definitely kind of understand. You know, just the kind of the quality thing, but I have to admit, like, I had to convince my wife to actually do that. My wife was like, "Oh my god, you're like wasting so much money," you know, like like doing something like that. But talk a little bit about just you know, even just your experience with that. You know, dealing you know just from the standpoint of wedding photos and family photos, and you know, just just really the comparison of between you know trying to value that that quality. Yeah, well, like as deals as ours are getting like not cheap, but a lot cheaper. Everyone that owns a camera, even on auto mode, thinks they're a photographer. And <laughs> yeah. especially like in Stockholm, where I live, the capital is Sweden. Um, I don't know how many I'm competing against, and they think they can do like an 18, 18 hour wedding for like 200 euro. And oh I cannot gosh. compete. I cannot That's compete crazy. with that. It's like no money at all. It's like doesn't even cover the trip to the actual wedding, nonetheless all the hours of work that goes into it. So of course it's hard to motivate them as well, but at least they are uh, used to paying for a good photo. As of esports, not really wanting to pay at all. They're just like, oh, hello Google. This is a nice shot. I'll just take that one. And oh, we're gonna get yeah, to that. pretty much. Really yeah. <laughs> Sorry if we're jumping. No, 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 no. Keep going. No, keep no, going. We're gonna it's get good. there. We're, no, yeah. we're gonna. We might start it right now based on, on that. But well, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, I'm yeah. sorry. Keep going. Uh, there are so many. It's like I've asked people, like, "Oh, do you want me to cover your event for you?" Or I'll ask a team, "Do you want me to go with you to this event and cover it for you?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure, come along." And I'm like, "Okay, well, uh, I would at least need 
paid trips or paid hotels uh and then maybe I'll do the shoot for free if it like gives me happiness or whatever. But they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't do that. We have someone with like a small camera or their phone or whatever. They can take the photos. Right. I think it's like it's not even esports like exclusively. It's like in any industry, if you want mm -hmm. professional results, you need to hire a professional to do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, esports. You're not going to hire somebody who's never run a stream before to run your stream for a tournament. You know, yeah. you, if well, you know, that's happening. Except, except well, that, that's the, happened. Except it has happened, but you can see it immediately. <laughs> yeah, but, but and that go, that may lead into what we're talking about. But this is not this is not anything new, as you're saying to 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 other industries, and it's certainly not new to esports, um, where people are just looking to. Um, I mean, there's a reason that there's the joke of esports dollars because not there's not <laughs> a lot of people in esports at this point that get paid. But I think what we're starting to see is there is a shift in in people understanding the importance of you know, well, getting what you pay for. And if you don't pay anything yeah. for it, you may yeah. get those those sorts of results. Well, it all works together, you know what I mean? People will pay more money for stuff that's higher quality, right? I mean, so it, it kind of, it's, it's a little ch yeah. chicken and egg thing in a way. And um, yeah, I mean, so the, the thing with, you know, we're talking about just, you know, you should pay, you're gonna pay, you should pay for quality and that sort of thing. I mean, is the problem if right people, now? Yeah, and, yeah it, if people realizes that the quality is higher, which, yeah, so it's they don't they always should, do yeah. that. Well, yeah. They so like be. like you know, Jin, like Jen brought up a good point with EG, right? They obviously recognize just higher quality picks, right, and using them in their promotions, their announcements, all that good stuff, right? So is there just a lack of that, that type of thing with other organizations, like the tournament organizers and that sort of thing? Mm. Or they just think that whatever publicity there will be from Reddit, Tim Liquid casters, players would be enough. But, you know, all, all these all these involved parties still come with um, with, with pictures, right? Because when you make an announcement, there's pictures, there's graphics, you hire a good graphic designer to make um, the event's uh, announcement look cool and stuff. So I think it, it all still plays a part, but um, maybe not enough people realize, or even the public, you know, really, um, recognize the efforts that need to be put into it. Well, yeah, well, what we hope is that this show is going to be an eye opener for some people, and we yeah. hope there are people watching that will say, you know, they these are people that are doing this for somewhat of a living, um, and they have they're professionals at it, and they need you know we need to treat them as as such. Yeah. Okay. Well, part of the uh, part of the thing that I think is. I guess a symptom of the problem is that a lot of the uh, a lot of organizations, I mean, particularly event organizers at least, place huge emphasis on video. Like they'll mention stream numbers, they'll mention you know the multiple options for paid or whatever for you know video, the these things, merch, whatever. But they, I mean, f to them, I guess in a lot of the cases because of the emphasis on video photos are kind of an afterthought you know like if oh now we have to make flyers for the video and we need player profile photos let's go see who we can bug for to get photos for free you know and stuff like that yeah there's and so many things they could be doing with these pictures too that they're not doing yeah i mean you could like teams could be releasing posters and selling posters with their players like people exactly. would buy them like you could put you could there's so many things you can do with these pictures that people just aren't and we've taking seen that work, work Kevin, with Carlton. We've seen that. Yeah, absolutely. We take, where we take pictures, we you can go right next door to Kinko's and and create some nice looking <laughs> posters, so yeah. um, and have them signed by the players, and then you know sell them, raffle them off, or auction them off, and it well, works. That's it similar to what works. I actually did at IPL four, where I printed. Well, I didn't sell them, but I printed off a bunch of photos, three copies of each, right? And I went to the players there and had them sign three copies, two for them to keep themselves, you know, and then one just for myself to frame at home. I see. Okay. Um, all right. Why don't we transition straight into um, problems and challenges you guys are facing and kind of want to just go straight into licensing and accreditation and that sort of thing. Um, okay. Just to kind of educate some folks, let, let's talk about when you guys shoot a photo or the person that actually clicks the shutter. Right, um, what is what? What are the licensing laws like? What what do they protect from the standpoint of the person that shoots the pic just by default? Like if they don't if they don't go and post it to like Flickr with CC, you know, Creative Commons and that sort of thing, 
you know, let's just say they take a picture and it's on their camera, and then let's just say somebody snags their camera and, and, and takes that picture. What kind of protection by law is it is there right now with licensing laws? Well, implicitly, um, it's it should still be your copyright, I believe. Like yeah. reg regardless of what happens, it's still your copyright whether you register it or not. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah. unless yeah. of course yeah. you're working for a specific company, correct? Yeah. And uh, it depends on the contract, contract, even then. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And um, for for you guys in particular, um, what you know, what are the general licenses you have right now? For what licenses do you have for your, a lot of your photos right now? Well, what I do all the time is I just license my photos as Creative Commons, and I add that info in not only not only the uh, where I post often, you know, like on Team Liquid, my profile clearly states that all my photos for, that I take for Team Liquid are Creative Commons licensed. I also put a URL to the Creative Commons license itself that I use in the EXIF data. And right. I mean, it, it, and I love the way Liquipedia handles it because right at the bottom of the page that you find every photo, it shows that these are the permissions for these these photos. You know, right. whether they were licensed specifically for Liquipedia or, you know, if anyone else has the ability to use them, should they need to. And which I mean, is that, important point, people which is important because people don't even, yeah, people don't even bother reading that. And as an aside, I mean, what one interesting fact that I found out of, like a month or so ago is that if you take any of our photos that have copyright info in the EXIF and you rehost it to somewhere like, say, Imager that strips the uh, metadata, that's mm -hmm. technically removal of copyright info, which under American law is illegal. Right, right. Um, Helena, do, do, you, do you use the Creative Commons too with your... Uh, I'm not like totally familiar with your American laws, oh, but that's right. <laughs> it's an American thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah. in Sweden, at least, I if I take a photo uh, with full copyright, I own all the rights to that photo and every copy of it. Uh, Seventy years from the pictures was taken, even mm -hmm. after my death, I would own the rights to my picture, and. I shoot everything, I keep all the rights for all my photos, um, except for when I shoot for DreamHack, they are allowed to use it on their sites, and uh, with their, like, whoever they're cooperating with. And uh, when I shoot with Blizzard, like for BCS, they were allowed to use it in social media, but should put me as credit. Um, but I'm allowed to use the pictures and sell the pictures however I want. Okay, and uh, so Jin, I know you know you've shot obviously some esports stuff and you know yeah. all your fashions. I mean, let's kind of talk about both. Um, mm -hmm. So with your your fashion stuff, with your just professional pictures, um, obviously right. you're not creative commenting. Like you're not you're not putting a creative yeah. commons license on those, right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. people have to pay you to use them, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, usually, well, for actually for fashion and esports, is so far it's pretty much. Um, I apply pretty much the same oh, rules okay. for the pictures, I guess. Um, the basic gist of it is, um, like Helena and, um, well, like everyone said, uh, I'm, I'm the copyright owner of my pictures, unless otherwise determined by contract. But um, all the pictures belong to me, so I set the rules of how I will allow a client to use it. So in fashion, if I'm commissioned to shoot an ad campaign, say, for Mercedes-Benz, um, usually um, they have a perimeter of how long uh, and where they will use these pictures say okay we are going to use these pictures for a year and you will use mm -hmm. whether in all media which literally means all media or um, selectively they will tell you okay you will be used specifically only for flyers and um, in store posters and so um, of course uh, based on these two things, the rates will be different because when they buy all media, the media buy is probably going to cost yeah. like millions yeah. of dollars, you know. Right. But if they do flyers, it's probably going to cost like ten thousand dollars to print, and posters probably like a couple hundred dollars. Then, like, there's no way for me to say, "Hey, you should pay me like one percent <laughs> of that one million dollars that you do right. for all media," right? Yeah. So, um, depending on awesome. depending on things, these things, um, yeah, we charge by and and then what. Uh, we finally agree upon would be the licensing that applies to these projects, right? And if um, Mercedes-Benz decides that they want to use these pictures after this one year, they will have to pay me again because mm -hmm. I own yeah. the pictures 
right. they cannot continue using it, if it even if it features their car. Right, it's more like yeah. a royalty type of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah. So the same thing goes for esports. I mean, um, I pretty much usually like say I made a I make a blog post on um, Team Liquid, and yeah. usually I, make, I I write a disclaimer, you know, just to be clear, like, um, oh, I do this for free and because it's a hobby, and um, anyone in the community is free to use this um, for their articles and anything uh, of non-commercial usage, you know, um, so long as you're not like say an event organizer where this picture is going on to promote um, something that's going to make you money, right? You're writing a like journalism article, pretty much. Um, that's okay, fine. Well, but well, well, let's talk about the day nine photo then. I mean, mm -hmm. that photo is used everywhere. I mean, right. Forbes on for sure, like the events. I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. it for sure on the events. Yeah. So, you know, like, so I just want to ask you just straight up, like, I mean, have you ever, have you ever brought that to her attention or, or? Um, actually, um, uh, Dana and I talked about this, and he tries the best he can to credit me wherever possible. And I know with TL because. Um, Victor Nasco and I talk about um, these usage issues too, and wherever they can, I know TL uh, and ESFI, they try to credit me too. All, all those people I've worked with, I think, because I have raised these issues that photographers should be um, credited for right. when the pictures are used, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so accreditation right now, I think, is a yeah. major problem. All you guys would probably they, agree they with should, that, right? They should get, um, can, can you hear me? They should get they, permission first as well. Yeah. To use it. And yeah. I mean, we can. I mean, if you don't mind, I'll, <clears throat> I'll tell a little personal story here because I am. Uh, uh, several of you have probably been been a victim of my mistake, and of of all people being a graphic designer, I should have known that. But um, and I'm not excusing it. Um, I can just say that for years in esports, uh, you know, even eight years ago when I was doing little graphic design stuff for little tournament websites and whatnot. I mean, that was what we were told. Just go, you know, grab a picture of so-and-so if we were looking for a picture of fatality, let's say. Um, and he was all over the internet at the time, if you can believe that the internet was around when I started eSports. But um, we would just grab a picture of, of fatality and put it up on the website and not think to, you know, not think anything of it. And I myself have continued to do this. Um, and Carlton will, will tell you, I mean, he's had to... He's had to send me a few messages a, a few times to make sure that I, you know, that we are reaching out to the photographers and making sure that we have permission to use it. Um, and so it's definitely something that we all need to be educated on, especially the organizers, because we're the ones who oftentimes are using it the most. Um, the, the last few events I've been at, including the Lone Star Clash, it's just, it's not something that we've thought about before. It's a good thing that we are starting to think about it because you know, as small as our industry is, there's bits and pieces of it uh, that the more that these bits and pieces can start to find a way to create their own revenue for it, the bigger the industry is going to get for everyone because there's going to yep. be more opportunity for people to jump in and make a living doing something in esports. But if we just skim over it and we don't, um, we, we don't do our due diligence as far as, you know, finding out if we're able to use the photo and then crediting the use of the photo, then we're just kind of throwing that entire element out of esports. And, and, and at some point, photographers would, photographers would just give up and go away. And then we're back to, you know, Instagram in, and phone pictures. Yeah, so there's actually two issues involved, I think, there that we should discuss. And I think the first one is really just accreditation, which is giving credit to you guys for your pictures. I mean, just a very, very basic concept, which is you know, you guys getting credit for shooting the photos and, you know, much less, you know, you know, getting paid for it and that sort of thing. And then, um, you know, and then the next, I think the second issue is really you guys enforcing this, right? I mean, you, like it's mm -hmm. not, there's no value if you're just like yeah. letting it go. Right. I mean, if things are just happening and it's going to continue happening, um, you know, for, for free or whatever, people just using your pictures for free and not even accrediting you or anything, then you know you guys will there will never be a value established for your picks for your you your brand you, you know you as a photographer so um so yeah so let's talk about the accreditation part of it first okay so so getting credit for just your photos like carlton like i'll, I'll just direct this question to you um tell me the value of i mean tell, tell me what it means to you for you know you to get credit for for these photos like all the photos that you've shot that you haven't gotten credit for to, to, to i mean Credit for photos is kind of like, I mean, 
the reason that like if you're in a, like you're working on a movie, you want your name in the credits because that's like that's recognition that you were a part of this, that you created something. Well, there's, but do people? Then, oh, so do people act? So there are a lot of people in those credits, and I'll be the first to, yeah. first to tell you. Like after the first few credits, I don't really read like I don't really read very closely into the rest of those folks, right? Well, but then if you, you, ask- you don't. But if you if you talk to somebody, like if you talk to somebody who's like the best boy or like the second key grip or something like, like <laughs> if, if you talk to one of those yeah. people like, when yeah. they get that credit like that is everything to them like when you get yeah. that credit okay and it, and it means and it might not mean a lot to people who are like like 99 percent of theater goers but for people in the industry for people who care for people but who it's matter, something right. for their resume it, it matters a lot yeah, yeah. it's yeah. the industry folks where it really yeah. matters the industry folks are the ones that are really reading these things closely and, and seeing who it's who a means to continued employment basically yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean it's not so much to you know that everybody recognizes your name it's just you want to be able to easily prove i guess that you were indeed involved in that and you yeah. were involved in this specific aspect of it that qualifies you to do something else in the future yeah. mm-hmm. And can I mention something else? Yeah, go for it. Um, about credits is that um, I think one thing that we sort of missed out on is that a lot of times promo pictures are supplied by the person who is being featured in a poster or an article, right? And um, many times in other professional industries, people pay to get PR pictures taken. And I think, um, obviously, you know, our most of our people in esports, like personalities or players, they're not going to be making enough money to actually do that. But um, this is, I think, partially where, where it comes in to to at least give photographers credit when they are providing you these pictures to be used for free. And I think um, teams and organizations really need to realize that too, because they're providing you free. Um, well, potentially free, more or less, but pretty much free um, materials to use for marketing your player and your personality, and that that should go a long way. And you know, just to thank them at least, credit. Yeah, mm-hmm. we need yeah. to start somewhere because we 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 started nowhere before. I mean, it was never yeah. an issue because we never thought about it, never once. I mean, again, just as early as last year, I would just doing graphic design it'd be mm-hmm. somebody would be like make me a versus overlay for <laughs> yeah. the stream tonight and I'd grab I'd go to Team Liquid um, in Liquidpedia and I'd grab a picture off there and I wouldn't think anything of it and that's that's really poor on me I mean I'm completely admitting I, that it was a I, shitty yeah, shitty I'll move. admit it too I, I was, I've done it too for my shows it hasn't been yeah. until the last several months that I've really started really accrediting so yeah um, and it's imp- yeah. it's really really important um, I just think like the organizations like if the organ if you start from the top and work your way down if the organizations are aware of the issue, then they can tell everybody on their staff like when they bring them in like okay if you're going to be doing the design work for us you can't just go on Google and do an image search and just take whatever you find and use it on our graphics because not only is it not right for the photographer it can be a uh, it can be a legal issue if you put these graphics up you, your site can get DMCA and you can get sued and you can't just say oh well our graphic designer did it we don't know about it it's okay, not our you're fault so like, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, like enforcement, um, because uh, again, these kind of things kind of go a little bit hand in hand. Accreditation is just like step one, like John was saying. But um, you know, why? Why I guess why haven't you guys been trying to enforce these things? Um, well, on a certain level, yes, we have. Yeah, they started. Uh, I can I can attest to that. It's not just started. We have been doing it for months. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just more of a question of. We don't want to go after the little guy who just uses their photo, you know, just to say, "Oh, hey, look, I was at this event," you know, on their on their Twitter or their Facebook. Just one or like, like the one-off cases. I don't. I'm not going to go after them, you right. know. I mean, if it, it's personal use, fair use, whatever you want to call it. I mean, there there are cases where it's like, okay, yeah, he's not he's not trying to do anything bad with this, you know, but. When teams or you know companies or people who can certainly afford to license photos, you know, I mean, if they if they misuse photos, I'm I'm gonna at least send them a message, you know, say, look, this is this isn't cool. You need to you need to do something about it. You know, I mean, I I don't take photos to, I mean, I'm I can't speak for everybody, but I don't take photos for the profit in it right now, you know, for esports because I'm comfortable with you know all the jobs I do and all that. But I mean. At the end of the day, 
I'm not I'm not in it to you know just drain the industry of money either. You know, I'm I'm there to be helpful, but at least give me like well, it really is the accreditation issue. You know, I mean, if you're if you're capable of of giving credit where it's due, then I mean that's that's fine for you know quite a few of us. And yeah, Helena. credit is free. Yeah, yeah, Helena, what are you, what are your thoughts on that too? Because I know you do a lot of stuff for DreamHack, so a lot of those pictures, yeah. you know, obviously DreamHack has you probably let them use use them to for marketing and all that stuff. But you know, some of the some of these Stefano pics and you know, they're they're from WCS, right? <laughs> they're not from DreamHack, which you're not affiliated with. So yeah, well. Uh it's complicated because it was actually DreamHack who did the VCS event, oh, and I see, I see. all our DreamHack staff. And the deal with DreamHack is, I there's 500 volunteers, and I've been a volunteer since I was 16 years old. And we all work for free, so starting to charge them for going to the big events where 500 of my closest friends work for free feels totally wrong. Uh, so I actually work for free for DreamHack uh, 18 to 20 hours a day for a week uh, covering 11 tournaments and concerts and the event and the expo. Uh, and they get to use all those pictures for free, higher resolution to whatever they want that they're supposed to credit me. Uh, that works most of the time but when people see, oh, here's a picture from DreamHack. They just take it, and maybe they credit DreamHack, but they never credit me. And that's, like, mostly what bothers me. And as the other said, like, if it's a news article or someone small that's just like, oh, look at this cool picture I was at this event, I don't really care. But when you go to, like, bigger tournaments or bigger organizations, like yesterday, uh, Blizzard posted um, pictures for their launch event in France and I took at least two or three of those pictures and I know who took every single one of them and no one got credited and then on their page they also edited the photos which is by law illegal uh, and oh, at wow. least without okay. asking so uh, I think like Giving credit is free, so at least give credit. Okay, if you can't, like, if you can't pay for it, sure, but at least give credit because it's always but, free to give credit. Yeah, you know, and we're talking about giving credit, but maybe one of the issues is that a lot of people just aren't sure who to give credit to. So, do you think, and and Chris talked about this a, a little bit, um, do you think that maybe some of this is on? the photographers themselves to to find a way to either band together or get this sort of information out more when putting out your pictures out there because you know that once you take one and you post it anywhere on the internet your Facebook page or whatever it's going to find its way kind of across the internet and people are going to end up using it do you think that maybe um, at moving forward that it might be important to find a way to to let people know the importance of um, accreditation. Well, the thing I use a lot is I, I mention this a lot. I put the EXIF info for accreditation and licensing info in the metadata itself. But the problem is that a lot of, as a software developer, I I can also say this. So a lot of us are ignorant about you know stuff that are how important some of the uh, metadata is. I know quite a few WordPress, for example. You know, a lot of their software suites cite it as a feature that it strips off metadata, you know, for optimizing file sizes mm -hmm. and all that, when that's actually technically altering, already digitally altering a file. And that's, in, in a lot of cases, not even legal, you know, because, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of times we give permission for using a photo in its original state, un unedited, you know, as is, right? If you post it to Facebook, it overwrites all your metadata with a single asterisk. Oh wow! Which one is, crazy. is not but good? But it does read the copyright info though and post it as a copy right. on the Right. At least Facebook does parse that info and display it now. Oh, okay. Places That's like good. Imgur, not yeah. not so good. I mean, a lot of people go like, "Well, why don't you watermark this?" That's not exactly viable because one, it takes a lot of effort to manually watermark every photo. 
because you need to make sure your watermark isn't covering something important. It also interferes with, you know, creative latitude in terms of how you can frame a photo yeah. before you even take it. Right. Because then either you have to be mindful of where the watermark's going to be and make sure nothing's there, yeah. right, which already cuts into your possibilities, mm -hmm. or or you have to, you know, go over it afterwards and make sure that a watermark isn't superimposed on something important. It, I mean, it's, for lack of a better analogy, it's like trying to use, trying to use a car running into something to put a deck together. It's, it's an inelegant solution for a problem that can be solved with, you know, just awareness of the fact that copyright info does exist in files where you can't see it. Yeah. I and mean, like that, for news sites, uh, like, I mean, I didn't ask you for ESFI, I can't just put a big obtrusive watermark on my photos because this is being used for a news website. Mm -hmm. So I can't have it. But I do know that every photo I post, I have my like, all my copyright info in the EXIF data, has my name, it has my email address or my website. So that way, if you were to take that photo and check it out, you could see who shot it and you could get in contact with me. And I know the way that ESFI posts those photos, it saves the EXIF data. So if you were to you know open right. the image in a new file and then save it to your computer, you can go in and find that info. So if you you know if you take that photo and you don't do that, there's there's just no excuse. Like you have you have it everything right there in front of you. Yeah, not I to mean, mention it's credited on the site itself, saying who took it. Yeah. Right, but but again, it's like you know as much as you guys are protected, just by you know again just by the law and just standards, it's you know like you're nobody's going to do anything until like there's at least some fear, right? Well, of, the point. The penalty. I guess I guess the point that we all try to make is that we're we could have pursued legal remedies a long time ago. Like we could have even sued. We can. We could have even sued everybody who's done this for thousands, if not more. You know. But we're not. We're not in it just for the money. You know. We're. We're in it because we like doing what we're doing. And yep. Even I don't think if any it, of us can be involved with this if we did. If we yeah. weren't passionate about esports, I mean, that's why we do it in the first place. Right. But even <laughs> if it's the long road around it, you know, just the you know how how involved it is you know we we can we we can afford to wait for a couple more months or hopefully not years but until people realize that there are certain steps that they have to take right you know well when you say people are you talking in general because Just the organizers in right in organ the organizers right now should be understanding the value of it and there's no reason i mean you right. should get paid if if they want uh you know, photos taken from at their event, they need to start, they definitely need to start paying for it. Yeah, Jen, I kind of want to get your opinion on this because, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think of that right now? I mean, obviously, esports for you is a passion too, and I know you do yeah. most of the stuff without, you know, even thoughts of, of making money. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if you were to put yourself in, in, you know, put your kind of fashion photographer hat and kind of switch it with like an esports photographer, you know, you, you know, you're trying to make a living out of it. Um, what do you think about that statement that Kevin just made about, you know, we we shouldn't, tr you know, we we can wait, I guess, and I mean, should you be, should you have to wait? I guess that's that's what I'm trying to ask right now because, um, you know, this for me isn't like cat, you know, like we've talked about things where it's like okay, the casters and and you know um, other segments in our industry where it's like okay, well, there's only a few the top people that are getting paid, you know, like you know kind of uh, an enough that they can make a living out of it, and then there's a bunch of people that don't, you know. In photographer mm -hmm. for the photographers, there's nobody getting paid to the point where they can make a living, right? So that's why for me it's like such a, you know, it's such a just kind of a big glaring thing for me right now that for you know photos are used so much in our industry and that not a single person I think is making a living off. Of well, that. they're used so much, but I think they can certainly anything we talked about this earlier certainly could be used more. Um, the teams right. are the worst outside of like EG and a few others. The teams are absolutely the worst at taking advantage of what photography can do. I mean, just we've talked about this before, but even a player picture. Um, to have on your website, uh, it's just ridiculous how many times we've asked running events. You know, do you have a a, a decent picture of you? And they send one with, you know, standing in front of. And this is no joke. Yes, standing in front I, of the I, mirror I in the bathroom, you know, in front of the shower, taking a picture. I am, and I'm thinking to myself, and and you want people to follow you on Twitter and and like you, and you you want to be you know a popular streamer. How is this possible that you don't have a yeah? This a is really picture? the responsibility of a team, I think, to mm -hmm. to overlook the marketing materials for um, their their own players, and th and this is why organizers are using um, 
pictures from photographers kind of without consent because they think that the teams have consent from photographers sometimes, right? right. But in th the fact is they don't. They're just like, oh, I found this picture of my player and like, okay, go ahead and use this. But these are things that the teams are supposed to have paid money for, for services, and in the end, the photographer gets, gets nothing, you know, and that, that is not fair because they were supposed to be paid for. Okay, so Jen, yeah. when should everybody start asking for money? Um, <laughs> I'll put you on the that's spot. That's a difficult question. I mean, you, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I mean, that's, that's the question. I mean, in some ways, that's not the first question, but that's the question we're going to get to, right, eventually, and I'm just going to ask it right now. Like, when should you ask? Well, ask whenever you can. <laughs> That's a good point. That, I mean, that, I mean, if you're trying to make a living as a photographer, and if you're good enough and professional enough to do it, um, I think you should always ask for it. It's a different story when you're trying to say, do the event a favor or do the team a favor. Sure, but I think you, if you're trying to make a living, then you have to be responsible towards yourself and towards, I don't know, your bills and or your family that you have to pay for, it and you know, start doing that and I think the main problem is that um, there are so many photographers or fans that just want to contribute to teams and say like hey I would do all these things for free and we kind of go back to what um, John talked about earlier on you know it's just like th there is some, always someone else who's just willing mm -hmm. to kind of uh, unknowingly maybe you know undercut the, the whole industry and that's kind of what is spoiling it so I think it's, it's really awareness um, in the community and in the teams that will help to try to make this um, something more healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, the well, thing... Oh, related ahead. to that, actually. Related to that is that in other industries, like, say, sports, fashion, news, whatever, a lot of people, like, the, the big difference between those industries and esports right now is they're, most of them are contractually protected, and they have retention agreements. Like you, you're hired as a photographer, and for you know X years as well, you know in, in the future where you don't need to worry about Joe Schmo who just got a five hundred dollar camera for his birthday deciding, oh, I can do this for free. Yeah. You know, and, uh, the biggest difference is that that the experience is respected in a lot of other in in a lot of the other industries other than esports. I mean, not to say that esports doesn't, but. Uh, the degree to which it happens is much higher in most other industries. And having those contractual protections really does help, but I think we can't readily apply that to esports yet because once we bring up, oh, hey, we're going to want you to sign a contract regarding this, a lot, of, a lot of organizations or people might just go, well, that's too much trouble. I'll just find someone else who doesn't require that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of freelance sports photographers out there i mean i know like a couple off the top of my head that i that are good friends of mine you know so it's, yeah but i mean they're not, not just going to take pictures for free though right chris i mean no, they're but, taking pictures but it's not in hopes that but i'm just saying it's not contractual um you know they don't have a contractual agreement necessarily i mean it's still just buying pics you know i mean they're expect they expect to pay for the pics you know that's the difference right um but you know like i, I don't think you have i don't know I, I don't know maybe i'm wrong about that I'm not sure but um but yeah, so so I don't I can't see us getting there. I kind of agree with you there, Kevin. Like I don't see us getting to the fact where you're gonna have to contract photographers necessarily. I mean, in some ways, I guess you know when when the events hire you for the weekend, it's kind of like that already, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you're officially, you know. But are they all hiring for the weekend? I mean, I I don't, was I know the, for was a fact the that and IPL do. Right, right, and that's a good that's a start because I can I can assure you that. Uh, that didn't happen before. I mean, when we right, were at and, GTL and, and ran events, we right. just had people that we found. I mean, shoot, two years ago I did a, an ESL, uh, was with National ESL, and we did an IM event. Mm -hmm. And um, Trevor Schmidt, who actually is the head at National ESL, Carmack gave him a camera and said, uh, well, actually oh gave my him a camera goodness. and his wife, this is no joke, That's terrible. and said, your job for the weekend is take as many pictures as you can. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there was no one there. I mean, I, yeah. I believe... Um, there was um, some guys that ended up kind of that were uh, at ESFI that are ESFI now that were asked to take some pictures too. But, you know, nobody thought to pay. It's like, go get as many pictures as you can. I think after the first day, he had like 42 pictures and none of them were good. He's not a photographer um, by any means. Well, the other thing so, is if you, I mean, if you, if you, 
broached the subject of hiring photographers to take stills specifically, you know, as an agent of the event, right? You can go on Wikipedia and look at their listing of events, and only the premier ones have even a chance of having actual hired photographers. But that's a start, at least, right? It is I mean, a start. It is a start. And esports does have a long way to go before, you know, even smaller events can afford to do that. Right. So, Helena, I mean, you've worked directly with DreamHack, you know, one of the big organizations now. I mean, do they pay you for a weekend? They don't pay me for the big events, as I said, because I'm a volunteer like everyone else. But uh, for, for the events outside of Sweden, like when we were in Valencia, for example, uh, I do get, uh, well, I don't really get paid, but I got a hotel and I had to pay uh, the plane tickets and food and everything myself. Okay. So oh, you, you might want to move your mic a little bit further away from your mic. There you go. So I ended up actually like losing money for going because I had to say no to two other assignments that I could have shot in Sweden mm -hmm. and gotten paid for. So to me, it's not really like I don't want to make money on esports. I just don't want to lose money on esports. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, that's. Wow, <laughs> that's, a, well, that's a crazy we, way know, to look Chris, at it. We've ta there. Chris, we've uh, talked about this you know, before. It, it's that fine line. I mean, yeah. when do you decide that the time um, and the effort and the skill that you're putting into it is worth something at that point? I mean, for years, I've been a volunteer. I mean, most 90, I'm just throwing a number out there, 95% of people actually working in esports right now are not actually getting paid for it. It's all volunteer. But they're... Yeah. they're is a, a time at which your skill set and your time should be worth worth something and then you start asking if somebody's willing to pay it you're not doing anything wrong you're not you know you're not doing anything different than the real world and uh, we're, we're starting to get there but it is going to take time yeah we're starting to get there but again it, it's you know I mean again we're talking about the bigger organizations and um, and secondly you know we've seen some recent you know, we've seen some you know, things that we've seen some recent changes in, in other segments, and I'll give you an example. Um, I mean, Adabisi, right? He's an observer, you know, and kind of went through the same kind of thing, not getting paid forever, and I mean, he gets paid now at these events, mm -hmm. right? And and don't, don't get me wrong, what he does is very important. I mean, he's essentially like the camera guy, you know, the cameraman for for the games. But for me, you know. You know, and, and I know just with Mike just talking to Mike, you know, one of the things that he did, at least maybe with the agency too, is that, you know, they put their foot down and just said, hey, you kind of got to pay me. You know, you have to pay me, like right now, you know, or I just can't do this. And you have to pay me something decent, <laughs> you know, not like, hey, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks for the weekend, you know, not like that either. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to bring up is that, you know, you, you have to you have to put your foot down at some point. And, and, you know, what you guys bring is, I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's definite value. So I, I, I don't. That, that, that's why I don't quite under, you know, get what's going on, and, and, um, you know, would like to try to figure out, you know, maybe, you know, how to improve this situation for you guys, right? Um, so yeah. So let's talk about like, what do you, um, ha what do you see as being, uh, what that needs to happen for you guys to even become be able to do this for full time, like actually be an esports photographer. Um, because maybe maybe just the current state of it, like there's just no way that you could even make a living. Um, is that the case? Well, yeah, there, from... go ahead. Okay, yeah, there's no way at least you can make a living as an esports photographer in Europe, because at least in the US you have events that are within your country and mm -hmm. a lot more a year than we have in Europe. For me, in Sweden, there is only DreamHack. There's not, not really anything that can compete with it. And DreamHack's not paying me for going to the Swedish events. So, no, there's no way I can make a living. And I'm not really looking to make a living mm. out of esports, as I said. It's just like, I think that they should at least pay for uh, trips, um, hotels, and food. Because, yeah, well, and then I can work for free. I think that even in the United States, it'll be difficult to do that just because esports events, while we do have more than, say, Sweden, they're spread out all over the place. Yeah, and yeah. typically speaking, you're going to want to hire local assets to do something instead of, you know, paying a 
a staff photographer, for instance, to fly everywhere. It's simply cheaper just to hire four different ones who are located in, you know, major regions right. who can take shorter trips, perhaps by car even, you know, to actually get to these events. Right. I mean, that's that's true, but are there even enough? I mean, there but there aren't enough photographers. But, in right, region, if, so. if you even look at just, if you just look at a single region of the U.S. that's, you know, easily reachable without paying someone for flights, there there's... It's the same Sweden problem, you know. There just aren't enough events in that region, you know, to qualify for esports to be a viable, like esports photography, actually, to be a viable career. I think for any one person, if you wanted to be full-time photographer just shooting esports, you would have to shoot for IPL. You would have to shoot for MLG. You would have to shoot for DreamHack. You'd have to shoot for you'd have to shoot for all the major premier tournaments, and they'd have to fly you all around the world. So that way, you know, two weekends a year, basically, you're shooting esports. But even then. They still have to pay you because if everything's getting comped, well, sure, it's getting comped, so you're not losing money, but you're not right. making money either. Mm -hmm. Well, and and th and this may happen in some uh, at some point. I mean, we're gonna. I think we'll we'll find as we move forward that 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 is exactly what's going to happen. Somebody is going to start to get paid to be, um, you know, a full time photographer in the esports industry, but you know, it is going to take time, and we can't obviously, you know. Uh, stomp our foot and have everything just happen overnight. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. you know, s these photos, they you know they they have longevity to photos. You know, the photos, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, I guess revenue models is royalties, right? And and Jen, Jen I kind of want to ask you with with a lot of your fashion photos. I mean, what what's talk about a little bit about just the longevity of how much um, or how long that you m continue making revenue for a single pick that ends up, you know, making a a uh, you know, just some kind of commercial commercial spread or, or that sort of thing. Uh oh. Can I hear? Oh, I can't hear you, Jen. Sorry, I muted hey. myself. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Have you been talking this whole time and we didn't just didn't know? <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. It's so okay. um I was gonna say, so usually you would be for whatever the um I was commissioned for because in fashion, I mean, it's, it's kind of seasonal, right? You, you can't yeah. reuse the, the same pictures selling clothes from the last season or two years ago sure. that you're no longer selling. Sure. Um, but, you know, for esports, um, the same people, or if you're talking about an event, like, I think there is much longer longevity compared to um, what I do in fashion or commercial work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for, for sure. Yeah. So, because my point in asking her that, guys, is that you know, there are different revenue models, right? It's not yeah. just purely like like contract to hire for a weekend. I mean, it's, yeah. it's also just. Per, I mean, there, there is pick. always yeah, I mean, there, there is definitely uh, usage possibilities like yeah. um, teams or organizations using photographs, like um, what John talked about earlier, um, like posters and things. And mm -hmm. yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Kevin talked about that too. Just posters or uh, merchandise. You know, merchandising is a huge thing in a lot of, um, I guess, celebrity-centric business models. You know, musicians, celebrities, um, artists too. So yeah. I don't see why that can't be something that could be applied to esports. It's just I, I guess teams don't realize that it's something they can do. But here's a, I'm just thinking. But here's a point I, I want to make. There's a reason EG is a marketing juggernaut because they're willing to pay to have something done professionally. So we just need to look to that and say, hmm, that's working. If I want my team to be at the top, not only do you have to have some results, uh, but we've seen results aren't everything, you have to be able to position yourself um, marketing-wise uh, at a certain level, and you're not going to be able to do that uh, by getting a lot of free help. It, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, all those fine details when it comes to, like, selling your brand and pitching to sponsors and doing that sort of thing, they notice all those little things. So, yeah. you know, having It is these, part of your brand identity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, people might complain about, oh, it's just extra 5%. It's like you were saying, Kevin, you know, like the extra 20%. That matters, like, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the same deal as I was just talking about with, even with my family footers. That matters a lot to me. You know, I'm willing to pay hundreds of dollars just for better picks than I take, you know. So, um, 
just, it's even 10 times, 10x that in commercial. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, so I kind of wanted to get to the point where, well, you know, what's, I guess, what's the promised land for you guys? Like, where, where would you like to see esports photography by the end of 2013? Like, from the standpoint of people using your, your pics and that sort of thing. Anybody? Anybody want to jump in? Oh, somebody else starts. I'm reading something real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I said. Well, the, the biggest thing. Sorry. No, go ahead. It, it's just make sure you know what the licensing model is for each photo you look at. Like, I mean, it's clearly listed on places like Liquipedia. And from the choice of photos people use, it's clear they just go on Liquipedia and look for a photo. It, it's, it's all listed there. You just need to look at it and acknowledge it and make sure that what you're using it for does abide by that license. And I mean, as another, you know, promised dreamland utopian thing, I mean, I would, I would really love if events would, you know, I wouldn't say qualify, but just understand that some of us do know what we're doing around a venue, not to stand in front of, you know, the video cameras. We, we shouldn't, you know, stick our noses up in front of players while they're playing, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, having free reign of, yeah. of a venue, you know, is actually a really, really big deal. Yeah. Like it, it allows, sure. yeah, it allows us, like, if you look at my work that I've done for MLG, uh, at MLG and IPL, and co contrast it with stuff I've done at, say, NASL, Morgan, the director at NASL, literally gives me free reign. I am allowed to go anywhere I want, you know, and I, I'm able to produce much, much better results because of that. You know, I mean, I understand it's not preferable to allow everyone to go everywhere they want access control is still very important you know but if i don't know how to phrase this properly but i mean if if you can understand that some of us do have the responsibility to know where we should be and shouldn't be i mean we can produce much better content that way yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, like, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead yeah. uh, If you look at, like, something like MLG, like, what are people mo people's, like, favorite pictures at MLG besides, like, award so many photos or somebody, like, you know, after they win? It's the photos of the players that are in the player pit. Yeah. And right now, no photographers are allowed in the player pit unless you're actually with a team and you have, like, a manager pass or something like yeah. that. Right. The only time you're allowed in. But, and I've talked to them about this before, and I said, well, maybe there could be an exception for a couple of photographers. And they said, no, not going to happen. Do you know why? Yeah. What was it? Do you know why this is the yeah, case? Yeah, I want to know why as well. If I, if I remember right, it was because one of the first um, few events of 2011, there were inex inexperienced, I don't know if photographers or not, but people with cameras in the player's pit taking pictures with flashes going off affecting that, players. That's one thing, yeah. by the way, for yeah. everyone watching. If, you're, if you have a camera, even if it's tiny little point and shoot, if it's any sort of Wait, live event, of never have flash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's yeah. a reason. There's a reason why. I mean, I, I I don't like phrasing it this way, but there's a reason why high end, low end, low light photography costs so much money, mm -hmm. because you're not allowed to use flash. It's too distracting for the people involved, and it does take some serious technology to pull off low light shots like that. So what? Like, just kind of curious. It's a little bit <laughs> a little tangent, but what are some of the things that you're, you know, you you kind of consciously not like try not to do? The flash being one. But so, I mean, it is is like taking like like clicking the shutter like ten straight times in a row, like right that's in their face. That's fine. Is that... I mean, that that's well, <laughs> okay. not right in their face, <laughs> okay. not right in their face. There's a reason why I carry around forty pounds of gear at every event for right. the whole day. It's because I do use large lenses with the reach, so I can get mm. photos of yeah. players, you know, from far, far away where they don't notice what I'm doing while they're, you know, trying to focus on something else. Yeah, but I get even like that, like. Especially MLG knows certain photographers, like they know what you're capable of. And like there's no reason that they can't have like three photographers per event be accredited with a pass that gets you into the areas where you're gonna get those better photos. Right. Like yeah. there's no reason for it. It's not like everybody else is gonna be insulted, like, well, why aren't I one of those people? But I have a I, I have a question and, and maybe you can answer too, but it makes me think that do you think that it's possible that the teams have decided that they don't want that because they want to be able to take their own pictures and use them. Well, where are those pictures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I agree. I, I know because there's only a few. There's only yeah. a few teams that would do it. But I'm just asking. I don't know for sure. But do you think it's possible that the, it's been mentioned that you know we don't want outside photographers 
you, you know, basically taking pictures of our brand and sharing it with others. Well, then it comes down to the fact that if this is like the whole conversation goes back to, well, are organizations wanting free publicity or are they going to want to pay for it? And this, is, this mm -hmm. would be the best way for them to get free publicity is by allowing photographers to come into that area and taking these pictures of their yeah, players absolutely. and putting it out there without having, like, because we're not asking it paid for that. We're not shooting for the team, so we're not asking the team for money. And these are pictures that will go out there for everybody to see, and then all of a sudden, boom, there you go, free photos. Yeah, there's a little too much. Sometimes there's just a too much of this kind of closed, you know, walled garden type of approach with when it comes to media and the team because – you know, in in other industries, just getting exposure period is, is so great, right? For mm -hmm. for um just any just your your players and that sort of thing. But believe me, I, I understand why a little bit of why they do it. But it, sometimes it's a little overboard, right? But, so okay, so I guess all access passes. I guess for some folks, I guess that's kind of what you're asking for. Um, just some folks, particular folks. <laughs> well, just anyone who can show that they're responsible enough not to do anything stupid. Is it just purely right. responsibility, or they should be? I mean, obviously, uh, I don't. I don't even mean like skilled. lock it down to two or three people. It's not even a matter of skill. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of responsibility. You don't want to interfere with the way an event is run, right? Yeah. But at, I mean, it's it's simply that you yeah. just need to know how to not interfere with you know the normal operation of an event. Right, and you which, guys, you know, everybody here has a good reputation already. You know, having shot at all these events, and. Not tripped over and cause somebody to, to, to lose a game, right? <laughs> Anything mm -hmm. like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's completely fair. Um, I think uh, it's also important to, like, at least at the DreamHacks and BCS tournaments, um, it's always live. And I'm running from the winner booth to the little stage uh, without. Uh, having the steady cam guy operated tripping over without ending up in any of the five or six different camera angles and making myself as small as possible and always wearing black so I don't show up in the picture mm -hmm. so I don't disturb the actual production because uh, at least at DreamHack we have really professional uh, production guys that uh, put, like they work as product with production for a living and then they do DreamHack and I don't want to screw up their job just by being in the way. And I think that's really important too. It's like don't don't step on the cables. Don't uh, like push the city cam guy and don't be in the middle yes. of the like the camera angle that they are using because that will ruin the live stream. Yeah. And also oh, we not... ha we've had DreamHack on national television, then, and then it's even more important that like. You want to show off the best side of esports. You don't want to have a big black head in the middle of the shot because that will look very unprofessional. Right. Speaking of professionalism, by the way, I'm not going to name names or events, but the other photographers, I mean, some of them here anyway, will will recognize what I'm talking about. When one of the events, you know, what the video operator actually shoved a couple of us aside because he wasn't in the right position at the right time. He literally like tapped all of us just to get into position, and that that's. That shouldn't happen either. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I could just see like I could just see it on stream. You see like a stiff. You see like a photographer and a a, a, a cameraman stiff arm each other. That would be a uh, that'd be pretty pretty classic to see. <laughs> yeah, well, a dream up is like the camera operators always have like first shot of where they want to stand because they're live, uh, and I'm just shooting still, so I can actually accept that because. They are like they are showing their feet. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I, that's what I mentioned they before. They shouldn't push me. I mean, that's what I mentioned before. Access control is important. The video cameras are supposed to be where they're supposed to be, but I mean, it's it's I mean, that it it happens. I mean, yeah. Okay. I well. Mean, so I just like I, I want to say just like I, I just got back from Korea. I was there for two weeks, and the photos that I got, I would not have gotten if Gome didn't give me the access that they gave me. And I talked to them ahead of time before I got there, and they said, like, you know, we'll try and do this. And when I got there, they arranged it, like, you can go here, you can go here, you can go here, you can stand here, but not during this time. You can only stand here during this time. And because of that, I was able to get in, like, right up against the booth and get these shots of the players and, like, go over here and get the shots of the casters. Because we arranged it all ahead of time, they worked out and they gave me the access that I needed, but still set restrictions on, okay, well, you can't be in the shot on the state, like, you know, on the floor during... Oh... Uh. I can't hear him. Carlton just went mute on us. Oh, whoa. There we go. 
All right. I don't know what. I, well, I don't know where it cut out, but basically, I'm just saying that like, like Gome gave me the access. They still had restricted access. Like you know, you can't in the booth while they're playing, but they gave me the access I needed to get the shots I got, and I wouldn't have gotten those shots without that that access. Okay. Awesome. Well, okay. Scoots wants to call in here, so I'm gonna right. pull him on here. And any of the other photographers too that are listening and want to, you know, call in and and add to any points that we have. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. All right, I need to add Carlton. I got, this. I got no video, so don't worry about adding a camera for me. What's up, Scoots? Welcome What's to up? climbing the ladder, buddy. Yeah, baby. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> he made it on. He's now made, he it. made it. Completed it. He's yeah. completed his esports cycle. <laughs> well, you, you you finally picked a, a a subject matter that interests me on your show. What can I oh, say? Oh come on! <laughs> oh man! Okay. And that, one, and that one guy is no longer on your show. Oh, that oh, one guy. Oh, one guy. Here yes. We go. Here All we right. go. I'll, I'll make this as quick as Scoots can. You know how that goes. Um, <laughs> let me mute this shit. Get your popcorn, people. Um, first off, uh, I want to agree with what you guys said at the start of the show. You know, I'm I'm by nature an esports kind of a video guy, video production, video streaming, and nothing. Nothing, nothing on this planet compares to a good photo. No video in the world shot by Steven Spielberg or anybody fucking else can, pick, can compare it to a properly framed shot. And you guys on this show are actually literally some of the best in this business, if not maybe in other businesses. Um, uh, and so, you know, hats off to you guys because you do tell a story that lives forever, you know, um, and especially when it comes to events. Uh, when you think of like event video coverage, right, other than the actual live stream, whether it's MLG or whoever, the videos are guys like Rod or stand-up interviewers doing very informative, very standard stand-up interviews. You know, what do you think about group play? What do you think about this? You, there's no sexiness in that. There's no history in that. No one's going to go listen in five years to Rod, you know, recording an interview with MC, let's say. But a picture that one of you took, totally different story, right? It just, it, it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, think of the histor you know, history and, and big, epic, big things that have happened in our, in our lifetime, right? Wars ending. Uh, all those kind of things are captured iconically in photographs of the day, right? Um, so again, huge hats off to you guys for, for what you do for little or no pay. Um, and again, coming from a guy uh, from the Got Frag days, pre- everyone streams, if <laughs> yep. you didn't have a gallery uh, uh, of event coverage and have photos of every player and like you didn't, you didn't bring a photographer with you, well, you didn't, that was a le your coverage wasn't good. Like now you don't go, where's the photo galleries? Where's the photo galleries? You all go, you go where are the videos, right? Where's the stream? Yeah. But years ago, we all really relied on photographers to give us the, the, the vibe and the feel of an event. Um, so th again, huge, 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 you know, nod to what you guys do. Um, now, I think one thing that photographers and aspiring photographers get themselves in trouble with in esports is if I'm, if I'm an aspiring writer, right, and I want to go work for an EG or I want to work for a Team Liquid, that door opens a little easier for me in the sense of what it costs me to be that kid, yeah. right? I got to know how to write. I got to have a computer. Yeah. But then the door starts to open, right? For you guys to do what you do, you don't need just a hotel room and some food, and et cetera, and a flight. You need thousands of dollars in gear and lenses and just, just to do what you do generally costs more to volunteer than pretty much any other volunteer position in our world, other than if you were mm -hmm. literally were volunteering your stream and bringing all your gear and stream for someone for free. So uh, again, I, I totally hear you guys when you're like, you know, give us credit for one. That costs you nothing. Yeah. And exactly. you're absolutely right. When, when you keep saying that, Helena, like credit is free. Give it, give it, give it. You know, and at Got Frag, we always did our best. Not all, like John, uh, I'm with you, bro. Not always did we give credit, but we tried to, right? right? EG tries to give credit, and if they don't give credit, and like Famzy is really good about hitting EG up and going, "Hey, my photo, can I get a credit?" And you scramble and you credit, right? I don't think you guys get anywhere near enough of that. And again, that costs nothing. Um, and I think if I put my EG hat on for a second, and again, I haven't never talked to Alex about this kind of shit, but if I if I go through the the mindset of a player and or the, the, the team that they represent, I think somewhere along the way they think they own it because it's of their guy. <laughs> or, uh, again, yeah, I'm not saying it's I, true, I think you're absolutely right. But like, I, but Actually, like, that's what Victor thinks too. <laughs> yeah, and again, I'm not saying, uh, like, Wait, I don't we, know. We absolutely the, have discussions about Right? So, you know, because again, for example, EG owns the rights to Huck. Do they mm -hmm. not, you know, so it may be in their mind any photo of Huck is theirs or Chris's. It's not the case, right? You guys have explained how the legality of it works. That's kind of think... why I asked that question, Scoots, because I know that there's that feeling among some teams. Not that they do it, not that they're trying to be malicious, but that 
they get that feeling because that's their player, you know? Yeah, and again, how easy is it to go to Google and go, Huck, and go, oh, mm -hmm. take that one, take that one, take that one. <laughs> yeah. um, and again, not right, but that is the world we live in. Uh, uh, so uh, I think when you get into rights, it gets really sticky. Like if I look at the back of my MLG pass that gives my rights away to them, Nobody can take any, any photographer, any video, any photo, any audio from an MLG event and make a single dime on it unless MLG has approved it. It's on the back of their... Yeah. Actually, the, what's on the back of the badge says that any video they make of you is their property. Correct. That, that's the technical. Yes. But, but so technically, a photographer that is not hired by MLG, who, I mean, in the sense that just shows up with the press pass, you guys cannot take that commercial either without MLG's consent. Is that not accurate? I believe not, because I mean, uh, what, what I meant by is it? Yeah, the, yeah, the think, holders are permitted to make commercial use of any visual or audio media of any kind. Okay, of I don't have the badge of so that. Okay. And, and, and again, that's that's pr and again, and this is that's, not to call you guys into question, but like, do you ask MLG or any? Uh, again, all rights are different, so I'm going to use MLG because I have that pass in front of me. Um, it, it's again. It, end of the day, it's a really fucking sticky wicket. Who owns rights to whatever, right? Does MLG own the rights because they gave you a press pass or do you both own it and where does Huck's rights sit? And EG owns mm. Huck right now, so <laughs> yeah. anyway, anyway, very, exactly. very great. Very great. Um, I love the fact you're having a show to actually try to, A, put some spotlight on the best in the business, yep. uh, and B, you know, out of these discussions maybe come some resolutions for not only you guys, but for the up-and-coming wannabe photographer, for the next mm -hmm. Ansel Adams who's like, hmm, boy, I just listened to all my idols, and they're all getting fucking ripped off. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so, 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 Scoot. Question, question I have, okay. and it was mentioned in chat, like, does it make sense that an organization like Getty Images starts to show up as a clearinghouse and a, and a place where stuff gets <laughs> uploaded and yeah. then back down? Is that not worth it? Is that a... I, I don't know. Um, because, again, your... your like, like, Chan, you brought up Atabisi's job right mm -hmm. and his job doesn't live on the internet where someone's going to rip it off true, and, true. and sell it for the next 10 years these guys for sure so uh, i wonder is there is there a, 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 a maybe again way too early because we're again we still have tons of volunteers doing everything in esports as john said mm -hmm. is it too early to figure out a way to to get your guys's content locked down um it, or right. is it more like what you're saying kevin like too soon we're not looking to piss in anyone's parade yet but hey Let's start talking about this. Let's think about us. Because at the end of the day, you all could just go, fuck it. I will not take any more photos unless this happens. And we all lose at this point because we need your photos out there. But you're not going to get what is rightfully due for you yet, probably. You know? And I imagine Alex hiring you as a motion to do the Huck Greg thing is maybe one of the only things that you may have been paid in a, in a fashion to esports kind of sense where you did a <laughs> shoot, right? You got kind of taken care of. That doesn't happen very often, you mm -hmm. know. And I know, no. I, I know, in EG's part, they've gone to the, you know, the the crew that you see that makes all the videos also yeah. take the photos, because again, I think Alex got tired of like, a trying to find good photos of players, and, and b <laughs> probably the next step having to pay for them or license them or figure them out. So they're just now when they go to an event, they line up against the wall and they take their own profile shots, right? Which, mm -hmm. again, you get what you pay for um, in that regard. Like, uh, I, I just wonder. Again, I, there's no answer, and I'm rambling a lot, but how, how do you guys protect yourselves other than going, fuck it, I can't volunteer anymore? I have to that's, look out for myself. Like, what is that? What is the fix here? That's I the big question, the, right? The big fix is trying to pursue, like, I don't think there's any one easy solution to it. I think you have to pursue a lot of different options. Like, the fix might not be, you know, I mean, there's, there's also the peripheral market, like the sponsor market, mm -hmm. that they need... They need advertising photos, and there are companies that might have a much easier time paying for those photos than the teams would. The teams don't have that kind of budget, so it can be a lot easier for that company to get photos from an esports photographer who's familiar with the scene, familiar with the players, who already has that access, than trying to send somebody new in that doesn't. Now you bring up a good point. Do you guys find that those same peripheral manufacturers are also ripping your player photos because they're geared? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Happens. <laughs> because, because, you know, you, you can you can say that you know EG has money and no other team does, so EG should pay. And obviously, other teams are ripping because they can't afford to pay. But like, a Steel Series can pay for photos. A Razer can. A, well, an mean, Intel that's, can. That's something right? I wanted to bring up because um, specifically with uh, with uh, with regard to 
the sponsors themselves, I know Rich frequently messages me, you know, saying that Razor is asking me uh, such and such photo, what are the terms? Mm, and that's, okay. that's, that's being expressed right out, right out of the gate. We want to use this photo. Do we have permission? And if, it's, if so, oh, what are the nice. terms? That's nice. That's exactly how it should be, right? Exactly. Oh, that's, 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 that's how all it should be. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then my only other question for you guys would be, uh, have you guys thought about, again, you have some of the most iconic photos. You're talking mm -hmm. about revenue, you know. Uh, have you literally, uh, do any of you sell uh, your actual work? Can I buy your work anymore? Can I support you that way? Yep. Do, do you plan on doing anything like that? Well, I haven't pursued it yet. Well, actually, I mean, I licensed, like, one photo out to iHeart Esports when they were doing the, uh, the stickers mm. uh, yeah. last year yeah. as a, kind of like a benefit thing for QuakeCon because they were trying to raise money for QuakeCon. So, I, you know, I let them use one of the photos. And it's, it's not, something, not something I've pursued that much. But you do run into the issue where it's a, it's a really tricky legal situation also. It's okay, you can take the photo for news purposes, for instance, if you're at an event. But then if you want to actually license to the team, did you shoot it in the event? Do you have to get permission from the event to do it? The, t the event or the team owns the rights, like the image of the player. So it's kind of like a, you have to enter into yeah. like a marketing agreement. Like, okay, well, if you're going to sell a poster of this player for $10... Maybe I get a dollar out of every poster or something like yeah, that. It might not be worth it at this point. Yeah. You won't sell yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it, it is because if the photos. It's better than nothing. If, yeah. It, it, <laughs> like, well, a, dollar, a, a dollar poster is better than nothing for an online view. So, I mean, if, if you can put a lot of things together like that, it can add up to a lot and it can actually make a big difference. I mean, hmm. you know, another point that we haven't quite gotten to yet is, is really building y'all's brand. Mm -hmm. as, you know, excuse me, y'all, <laughs> building, <laughs> building your brand, you know, as a photographer and, you know, kind of the benefits of, you know, what that will reap for you in the future, which is, you know, I think people will see you as a higher grade photographer, you know, actually worth, you know, worth paying you. Right. And, you know, one of the things I was telling Carlton the other night was that, you know, I, I see you guys posting pics on Reddit. Right. And I know who you guys are. You know, I, I know, you know, that's you that's posting it, but a lot of folks don't. Right. So maybe, you know, when you I don't actually have, even have a Reddit account. Yeah, I know you don't have one. I'm not talking about Kevin, but but definitely Carlton stuff. You know, Carlton obviously with the suppy suppy pick recently, right? But um, I, 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 we don't have to talk about that. But but um, you know, one of the things that you can do is is you know those those iconic pictures, you, you, you know, post those on Reddit and like uh, attribute yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Say that's this is me. Title it. I mean, it's art, right? You can actually mm -hmm. you can create like this. It's no different story. than setting up a yeah. deviant art. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, and they don't, they don't even do it. Your enough, own DeviantArt like, yeah. profile, make it more esports uh, centric, and set up some sort of profile in esports that allows people to to recognize your work. And then when they see that photo being used by MLG, they're going to say, "Oh yeah, I remember Carlton took that photo." Yeah, um, put your name so in these the are title. things that you guys can do as well. I would think. Yeah, I mean that, yeah. that's it's just an example of something that you know where you can you know your name will actually be affiliated with the, with the shot. And thus, you know, everybody will know that's you. And if they love the pick, then, you know, in their minds, you know, you're you've just kind of gone up. You know, you've leveled up basically in their minds. You know, and and, and maybe deserving of of being paid to or being hired to to shoot. Yeah, I I'll, I'll get off real quick. I got one yeah. more thing to talk about when regards to press uh, accreditation and like access. Yep. Um, and I absolutely agree with Kevin. You know, I've done a lot of real sports events, not as a photographer, obviously, but in attendance and, and, and event logistics stuff. And it's standard. Certain photographers from certain press pools are vetted and they have access that others don't. You know, you can look at any major sporting event, look in the field of the Super Bowl, and certain guys got pink vests and they're allowed to be down there and certain guys don't. They're, the photographers have to be on the concourse, have to be somewhere else, and you're, you're either credited to be on the field or you're not. Um, I think MLG got themselves in trouble in the sense that they gave everybody and their mother a press pass. You know, every kid who was coming <laughs> to blog for everybody and their mother, uh, and then some, can get a press pass. I think uh, my and, mom was there, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, it, and again, that's great in the room. It does get ugly when that, they all have the right credentials to get them in front of the cattle guards, for example, or inside a tournament area where they're bumping into players. And, and again, that's why that has been closed off. But yeah. I absolutely agree with you, Kevin. There, we need to come up with a way. Uh, I, I, we don't the leagues do or the events do <laughs> to say these organizations and therefore these then representatives of organizations get this extra access because again that creates the iconic photo you know you in the mass of everybody else trying to get that shot is going to be a lot, lot harder than if you can sneak up like Carlton was saying next to the gom booth right 
not sneak, but mm-hmm. legally be allowed to be there. Um, well, so again, I too. But, no, I, but, but uh, so somewhere along the way, Adam and the guys at MLG have to go, and maybe it's a maybe there's a portfolio submission. Maybe there's some yeah. sort of vetting mm-hmm. process. I don't yeah. know, but like. I want you, uh, and I, I'm not with EG anymore, but I want you guys to be that close to those players. I don't want Johnny Bravo 264, who just went to Best Buy and he, bought a fucking shitty camera, to necessarily have Chan, the same access. He doesn't want Chan Man V up there taking it. Yeah, taking exactly. It. Or myself. <laughs> um, so, you know, hopefully, again, hopefully this, chain, this show gets a lot of people to open their eyes. You guys get compensated better. You get better access. Because, again, your shit lives forever. Forever. Um, and that's my take on it, bro. Thanks, Chan, for having me. Right. Thank Thanks, you, Scott. ladies and gentlemen, for the Thank show. You. Thanks, Scoot. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for calling in. Talk to you later. All right, later. All right, good deal, good deal. It's always good to get Scoots' take on things. Oh, the overlay is going to be a little weirded out for, for a while. Uh, why don't we take some more questions from the chat? Um, I don't know if uh, any guys are trying to call in or not. If you want to call in, um, Skype ID is ChanmanV. I'm going to set up that phone number eventually, but um, let's see. Okay, so Tim wants to call in. Shindigs. Let's get Tim on here. See if he's going to troll us like he did last time. Always. <laughs> Always. Hello? What's, up? What's up, Tim? Hey. hey, how's it going? Good, good. Got a question for us, or are you just here to troll us? <laughs> uh, no, no, okay. I actually wrote things down on a notepad. Oh, look out. Look ah, out. Ah, damn. Yeah, so... Um, I'm pretty familiar with most of the people on the call, so I really enjoyed the show today. So great job. Hashtag Asians of Esports. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Complete with my requisite photo of taking pictures of food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I just, I really find the discussion interesting when we're talking about wanting to quote unquote make a living or, you know, anything along the line in esports because. We're still in a very funny place where it's like a very messy space of your work, professional work. And, um, You're breaking up a little bit, isn't that? Yeah, one solution, like what Scoos was talking about just on the call, like what solution is there to get people to recognize that this kind of work, like the, the photography work should be compensated, is I think these guys are kind of already doing it. Like I would look at Kevin Carlton or Gina's, or I'm not familiar, sorry, with Dream Pack Helena uh, as much, but. These guys do such an outstanding job of what they do that if you're not picking them up and if you're not compensating them properly and if you do, it's like just such a detriment to everything that's going on in the scene right now that you are just making a terrible mistake and another organization who's smart enough to come pick them up and treat them properly is just going to do that and the the other organization is just going to lose out. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of... Yeah, in the long run, sure. It's just just getting to that step, right, is... It's always the hardest thing. I don't know. They Making would... that step. Yeah, and the last thing I kind of want to say is that anytime we talk about the, you know, making a living out of thing is we're talking about anom- anomalies here. And I feel like this is oftentimes, like, how can anyone come up and do it? But, like, kind of scoots out. Know, like, it takes a very kind of special person to even get the gear to and fly out and get the hotel to, like, even get the portfolio out there. Like, if I were to assassinate Kevin at an event, like his death in gear would probably fund like half the prize pool. <laughs> so is he on your will, Kevin? Is that the deal? I mean, uh... <laughs> he keeps trying. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing. Like, you know, one of the segments was really just how to get into this, but I don't even think we're to the point where we even need to talk about that because we haven't even, you know, we haven't. The people that are already in it and, and good at it aren't even there yet. You know what I mean? That, they're not even getting paid yet, so it's like, it's kind of crazy even talking about people like getting into this because like, why would you even get into this like currently, right? I mean, well, if, if not for just passion, we've all if not for just pure passion, for passion. I mean, it's just. But um, all right, Tim. Any? Well, well I mean, the last thing I gotta say is I yeah. think it's interesting that you we're we're always constantly trying to frame esports with like any other industry when it's such a unique space in itself. So I'm like, I don't really buy. The idea of like you know why wouldn't why would anyone get into this you know you get into it because you love it and yeah. that's kind of the gateway and I think it's a big gateway anyway anyway that's all yeah. hashtag Asian <laughs> Esports <laughs> thanks bud so thanks, I, I don't know what's going on Michael I don't know if people are trying to call in or not but definitely I think my my ads like don't add me try calling me directly guys if you can because I don't know something's going on I think with my Skype I can't take call- 
I don't see anything. So uh, if it's not working, just go ahead and ask uh, ask your questions on stream chat here, and we'll we'll start asking them. Somebody is trying. Yeah, to somebody's call trying to call in, and I don't I don't see them at all. Uh, I, I can't restart Skype either. That would probably clear it up, but right now it's okay. Super at, delayed. Uh, target Target has a question. Charles is his yeah. name. Actually, he runs a lot of Quake stuff. Okay. Here in North America, his question is: Have you ever had any requests from the event organizers to try and achieve a certain theme or to find a, a persona in, in in an event or a person? Basically, have you ever had any odd requests? If, if if you've been asked to do some stuff by an organizer, have they ever said, "Hey, let's make sure we get a picture of this"? Something that you know you thought was odd at the time. I haven't okay. had. It. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Helen. I have I haven't had like anything odd, but when I do DreamHack, they always tell me um, take ugly shots of <laughs> like <Dude>. all, <laughs> all the expos and stuff, so you get like really like an overview of here is your logo, this is what you're sponsoring, uh, like photos I would never ever post anywhere, but they want it for marketing issues. That's the yeah, I think we call those soulless photos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> soulless photos. All, all the sponsor shots. You have to get around the venue and like shoot all the sponsor logos, the booths, like fans this, interacting with the sponsors to show basically that they're getting their money out of it. The soulless ones. I love, I love that. <laughs> Gosh. I, mean, I haven't shot any of the events, but like as like a press photographer, I've never they've never really said anything like try and get this, try and get this. I've never had that kind of contact. Hmm. Okay, so I guess interesting. Okay, I'm trying to add. I'm trying to add some folks here, but that's not working either. Keep keep going with questions, John. I have a I have a question um, uh, for for Z Motion. Um, yeah. Because I can't say your name because I'm not Asian. He's a super. Um, he's a super fan. I am a super fan, actually. <laughs> I, I'm completely impressed. Uh, being an artist, I'm so impressed with your with your photography. I'm a huge fan. You can ask Chris oh, later. Thank you. Um, and speaking, I'm curious because when I'm looking at your stuff, you know, it's all pictures of uh, very beautiful women or done in a very beautiful way. How does that translate to, you know, how do you go from doing those sorts of pictures to then showing up at a, a live gaming event where it smells like shit and <laughs> it's, you know, 99%, you know, it's more uh, BO than shit. Gamer BO, yeah, BO. <laughs> and at 99% male gamers. Um, that's got to be a, a, a that's definitely a much different than what you're used to. I mean, do you find that difficult at all? Uh, is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Did, uh, John, you cut off. I'm not sure if it was my Skype, but <laughs> what you just tried to say was really like broken up. Oh, was um, it? I apologize. But, but it was something like, how do I go from shooting like? I guess pretty girls to going yeah. to somewhere ninety nine percent male. Yeah. <laughs> doing esports. Yes. Um, I'm just really into game art. I have a lot of friends who work in commercial art. You know, um, concept stuff for games and movies, and so it's just kind of a thing I try to do to not feel out of loop. So I try to check out games that they are making. So I have friends who who worked on StarCraft and was one of the reasons I got into it. And then I ended up liking it, right? So had the team and started going out like to events with the team. Yeah, that was it. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I guess another way to put it for, for John is like, <laughs> How, like, how does it feel the to be sl- how does it feel to be slumming it in in esports right now? <laughs> in some <laughs> ways, like no, just given that the you know the venues aren't. You know, it's just, it's it's very raw and right, like, mm-hmm. not slummy, that's like a bad way of saying it. I mean, just like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you're getting at, right, John? It's, it's just yeah. not like, it's not these like photo shoots, it's just, I mean, it's a different, it's, it's like it's like a live, it's a live event, right? It's, it's mostly candid versus, you know, studio stuff. I, I yeah. know what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jer- Jerome, I think, wants to call in. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Jerome, uh, what's up? Hey. Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I just want to give you guys like a view from the trenches, uh, as I would call it. I've been doing esports photography mostly as, as a hobby for like one and a half years. Uh, went to a local tournament, ended up meeting Grubby, took a couple shots, he liked them. 
uh, and sort of escalated from that, you know, going to DreamHack, going to WCS, um, always paying pretty much my own expenses. Uh, yeah, Shindix, that's me, thanks. Um, paying do, all do of my you, own gear. Do, do you and Helena know each other? Uh, yeah, we met at but, WCS and DreamHack a few times. Okay, cool. Um, like your work, by the way. <laughs> kind of jealous <laughs> at some point, but yeah. <laughs> so I, I've been doing this mostly based off of passion. Uh, and for me, the whole experience has been mostly very positive. Uh, I make a point of that to, uh, when I finish a, a set and upload it to Flickr, to always tweet at people that I see uh, in the shots or that I specifically photographed, uh, mm. to get ahead of them. Because yeah. I don't want, uh, obviously, I don't want people taking your shots. Um, but I, you know, I always try to get ahead of them and give people cards when they take their pictures at events. Having a whole stack of those is always really handy. Um, and people t generally tend to ask me for permission as well. Uh, I got a m uh, this cute little email from uh, from EC Daisy, who I shot at IEM the other day. Um, I wish I had it in front of me, but it basically read something like, "Hi, I cannot download picture from your blog. How do I do TT?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I ended up sending the pictures to him anyway because, well, I don't really see any bad part of it um, because he's a player. He's mostly solo. Uh, but I have been in contact with with teams as well, you know, Fnatic, for example, asked me very straightforwardly, like, hey, can we have your picture for, you know, a new player, Harstam, uh, looks really yeah. cool. And, of course, you end up in some sort of negotiation. And, yeah, you do notice that people, especially teams, are just very hesitant, uh, hesitant to, you know, to pay you for that. Uh, I guess EG is or was different from that, but I haven't really been in contact with them, so I can't speak for them. Um, but at this point, to actually tie into discussion, I would say, we're all at, like in this together at this point. I mean, no one's really getting paid well decently, except if you're already already a good you know solo photographer. Wouldn't it be a good point to sort of try to team up and try to get some sort of organization going, um, you know, where you can get some accreditation from, uh, let's say, the esports photography community at large. I know there's not a lot of us, but together you can actually make something work. You know, if you have like a site with a couple of members or accredited people on them. Um, and you know, organizations see your name on there, your picture, and they're like, "Okay, well, this guy's pretty legit." What's your thoughts on that? So, so getting an organization like a a union, like a photo union, yeah, or agency, agency, okay, yeah, agency would be a better word okay. Than yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, English isn't my first language, but <laughs> no, I guess it's okay. Yeah, okay. No, we get what you mean. We get what you mean. Yeah, but it's like. I think that's a good way to put it. There's for there's something for casters as well at this point, isn't it? Like esports, uh, it's something like Tomba. He's like one of the leaders of that. Yeah, that, that's yeah, he has an agency. Yeah, that's just an overall just a esports. My idea for the photographers would be photographers would be more of like an association where they mm -hmm. just band together and put together some specific outlines to what they expect right. from organizers and what like the organizers should expect from them. Uh, what, what, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be something at least worth looking at because, like I said, we're all in this together. Of course, at one, uh, if we do get something you know good going off, then uh, we're going to end up competing. But that's just you know healthy. Yeah, yeah, we gotta. Yeah, exactly. Just once you get to a certain point. Um, yeah, I, know, I definitely I like the idea. And I've actually, I've talked to John about this before about some mm -hmm. sort of group of photographers where you have that kind of thing, and maybe that's the vetting process. Maybe we have some sort of like association. Where if you want to be accredited by this association, like you're vetted, and then the organizations know, like okay, well, you know, they have accreditation from this 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 group. We know we can trust them to do their job if, they, if we bring That's them right. That's yeah. right. And it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you start right away with an agency, what you're what you're saying is right off the bat is that we're looking to get paid, and we may not be at that level yet. But I think what's important is it's it's really no different than just having this show. This is an association of photographers that are successful what they do. How do we get them together to be able to better market what they do to to this industry so that they can start to do um, some things on their own to get paid? I mean, I think initially it just needs to be about awareness and kind of working together to um, to establish themselves above those that just do this as a hobby and only have you know a little camera and go show up at events and and think that they're taking great pictures. Yeah, yeah. I really agree. I think at this point there's really nothing to be lost and everything to be gained because it can't get really get much worse than what it's like right now, can it? Well, of uh, course I it would, could, I would but. Have to <laughs> first. Yeah, I guess. So, 
yeah, I guess I'll wrap this up. Uh, thanks for for letting me know. Um, I just one small tip is, you know, of course, about the cards. I always try to get my email uh, out to as many people as possible so they can contact me for stuff like this. It really yeah. helps. It's no, that's like, I think that's good advice. I mean, for sure. I, it just making it as easy as possible for them to you know grease the wheels for them to credit you get you know credit your photos is a is a good thing. Yeah. All right. Thanks, bud. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, okay, let's. Uh, okay, Oliver. Okay, uh, see what I'm uh, having to do, guys. Before is we uh, oh. before we uh, get another call, I just want to address a, a point I saw in the chat a couple times. It's why don't we just demand to be to mm -hmm. be paid? I mean, as I mentioned before, if if we demand to get paid, a lot of these organizations will just turn us will just turn us away. And honestly, from from my own personal perspective, I don't I don't need the money. You know, I mean, it's it's something that should eventually happen, and it would be great. But for the time being, if 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 it's contingent on not being compensated for what I'm doing, I I'm still going to do it. You know, I mean, yes, I'd love for this industry to get to a point where we can come up and say, "Hey, look, I need I'm I want to shoot this event, and I can offer to do it for X." And the organizations won't just go, "Well, we're just going to find someone to do it for free." So I just I just wanted to I want that. I want to clear that point a bit, and it's not for lack of track record or anything because that's all there. You know, it's just it, it's hard for organizations right now to justify that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I know I know where you're coming from, and and I I totally understand it too. And, that, and a lot of people are in the same boat. I mean, that's like the theme of esports, right? <laughs> Is people mm -hmm. working in esports for passion, and and how that translates in, into something more, and and you know, I'm 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 kind of in the same boat as you, Kevin. You know, like I don't do this full time, right? So I, you know, in fact, I'm an engineer too. So it, it's it's, you know, so I kind of understand that. But that, you know, being a professional, though, you know, for me, like I, I still I feel like you know there are certain things that still need to be done. You know, that's you know that, like the prop they're proper things. You know, there's a proper kind of um, evolution that should occur. I think I, I and and. You know, and I've told John many times in the past. You know, just because you do it for passion doesn't mean that you should, you know, you should be taken advantage of in a way. Right. I mean, all, you know, all I'm trying to say is that yeah. yes, I do it for passion, but I yeah. just don't think that the industry is at the point yet where we can go by the best practices that other industries employ. Yeah, right. and I, I would agree that with that a lot of lot of things, but I just feel like your photos, like photos, are used in so much marketing, you know, the marketing side of all of this. And maybe there, maybe it's just not being used enough right now, and that's why, like, you know, we're having this discussion right now. But for me, I just, I just feel like photos, you know, and Jen, Jen, Jen can totally like talk about fashion, and it, it's they're they're very valuable things that are used in, you know, like commercial spreads and stuff like that, and you know, and it's it's just right now esports, it's I guess it's just photos just aren't being used in that way yet. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, but Oliver wants to call in. He's been trying forever, so we gotta get him right, in. <laughs> Oliver, you there? Yeah, what's up? Hey, thanks hey, for your Oliver. patience, man. Like, yeah, something's up with Skype. I'm not seeing anybody calling me, and I know like 20 people are calling me. So, yeah, um, no problem. Uh, I just wanted to call in because uh, I, I'm I'm kind of like the success story for uh, esports photographers, um, especially since uh, I'm a contracted photographer for the IGN Pro League. Mm -hmm. um, probably yep. most of the photos that you've seen since IPL three are all mine. Um, Everything from uh, posts from ESPN uh, to anything that you see published by uh, IGN for their esports community are photos that I've taken. And uh, it, it certainly started as a volunteer job for me. Uh, the, at IPL3, uh, they didn't really have as much of a budget as they do now. So I just kind of signed on, showed them what I could do, and ever since then, um, they were so happy with my work that now I get my trips completely comped and uh, everything is paid for okay great. yeah so for you that you guys that don't know Oliver Oliver his last name is you too Oliver you I, I kind of want to make sure these names are associated with picks again and um, yeah so so with 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 IGN or IPL are there yes. any other photographers except for you um, well with IPL 5 we recently expanded to a second photographer we just hired on a new photographer uh, that also covers uh, the new stages that we have because now uh, IPL 5 has expanded now to five games so 
me by myself, uh, it'd be hard for me to do my due diligence for each game if it was just me running from stage to stage to stage. So right. now we have uh, two contracted photographers that um, are at, everything's comped and paid for, and uh, we actually get paid for what we do. And um, I, I mean, after I, I see Kevin and, and Carlton at almost all the events that I go to, and I, these guys are definitely some troopers because they work as long and as hard as I do. And they don't get a paycheck at the end of the day, and and I definitely give these guys massive props for that. Are you? <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> no, that's no, that's great. I mean, that's definitely great that you're. Um, so you're an employee there, or just a co- contracted there? I uh, I'm a contracted photographer okay. for. Okay. Uh, for IGN, um, they okay. long-term contract me, so uh, for every event that they do throw, um, I am the one that's covering uh, everything for them. Uh, but my job is a little different than uh, what Kevin and Carlton, and these other photographers here, try to do, um, because for IPL. Uh, what we want to do is try to show our sponsors mainly that we're giving them the spotlight that they paid for. And uh, I, I do a lot of branding for our sponsors um, along with the players, which which are also important for news feeds. But uh, I feel that, that my job really heavily revolves around uh, the sponsors and making them happy. Right, right. Okay, and, so, I mean, given that you're the success story, right, um, what do you say to these guys right now? I mean, should they? I mean, I mean, are you the like, are you the only lucky one right now where they, it works for an organization that's willing to pay, um, a, you know, a decent amount for you to, to shoot their events? Or, I mean, do you have any well, advice? I, I guess given that I've I've talked to Kevin and Carlton before uh, about how how they were trying to uh, monetize what they do, but um, to tell you the truth. Uh, for me it was kind of lucky how I got into IPL because um, I actually first got into IPL 3 because one of my guild leaders in in an MMO I played is actually the lead technical director for uh, IGN so uh, when they started the whole IPL um, the whole IPL deal they said hey we need a photographer to cover this stuff for us are you available to help us out and I, I guess I just kind of had a leg in on this kind of thing, and from there on, I just kind of gave my 110%, show them what I could do, and since then, they've been happy with it, and I've been invited back every every event since then. And, like, this isn't just limited to just our, like, IPL events. Like, I've gone to Comic-Con, E3, PAX. Uh, they flew me to all these places, gone to SSXW. Um, See, I mean... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So like you're. I mean, that, that's kind of how it should be, right? Um, right. With with all the other ones. So. And I mean, I, I I really feel that IPL sets uh, a very nice bar um, for the organizations out there, and I and and I really hope that these other organizations see from our success that that it's it's really worth investing into photographers to really market your your events. Be not not only just for people to realize what's going on, but also for sponsors, because that's that's essentially how they get most of their money to do the event at the end of the day. Okay, okay. right, right. <laughs> that's good stuff. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Oliver. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get maybe one more question. How about that? Yay. Any more questions, guys? Oh, I had a question for you guys. Um, so when you're when you're talking about a weekend, how many shots do you guys take, and how many shots are actually used? Okay, how many shots are actually used? Two to three percent hit rate. That's not yeah, bad. Maybe. That's not bad. I would say, like in the course, like a, like an MLG or IPL, I shoot on average fifteen hundred to two thousand shots a day, and I'll post. Oof. At okay. most fifty. Okay, that's not bad. How about you, Elena? I'm uh, very different because of DreamHack having, as I said, eleven or ten or whatever different tournaments and at least three concerts a night and expo. And I'm at all of them. I have to post pictures from every event. So I think uh, I take maybe at the busiest day with the finals. I think I take like between six and eight thousand pictures in a day Jeez. and 
I think I post maybe 10% or 20% of them. Wow. Okay, okay. That's not bad. That's not a bad hit rate. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, one last question. Ghost Quest shoots that much, but he doesn't post that many. <laughs> <laughs> He'll shoot like 8,000 a day easy. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 8,000? That is a lot of space, man. Yeah. <laughs> to, some, to some extent, yeah. <laughs> Alright, next person to post their Skype ID gets a call in. Post your code Skype ID and you'll, I'll, I'll call you. That's the only way I'm able to call people right now, or people are able to call in. Just a really, really quick question that I saw in chat. Favorite camera and lens by far, oh, D3S 7200. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah everybody, everybody like list their 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 uh, favorite camera in lens. Oh, yeah, my favorite now, uh, I, I picked up a 1DX and it's pretty awesome. Uh, favorite lens? I can't decide between my 70 to 200 2 8 or my 1635 uh, 2 8. Be one of those. I love my 35 millimeters ice as well. So nice. For some of you in the in the chat, we know that this is just going like way over your heads. So uh, just bear with us. It's going over my head a little bit too. <laughs> Jin, what's your favorite? Are you um, muted again? I yeah. use a one DS Mark III. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. I use a one DS Mark III, and usually the seventy two hundred will be the one I use. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's it. All right. Let's get. Seems okay. Oh man, I just got like a ton of requests here. Okay. Let's get. Let's get <laughs> Ghost Claw in here real quick. Yeah. We gotta at least get him in here. <laughs> Ghost Claw incoming. Robbie. Hi, I wasn't actually expecting to be picked up for the call. Hey. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Well, welcome. So, hello. Thank you for having me in the chat. No problem, no problem. I was just wanted to see if you had anything to add to, to the discussion we had today. Um, I really like the discussion that you guys have been having. I've been having a great time watching, and obviously, uh, as one of the, I was actually doing MLG photography management for the past year or so and mm -hmm. yes. can agree with all the points being made. Um, one of the things that I'd also like to bring up is one of the reasons that we're really having this discussion is that your, uh, a lot of the esports, you've covered it a little bit, is that a lot of the esports organizations that run tournaments that need photo assets are just going ahead and taking them off of Liquipedia even though we have the file and for their info right there for you and um, mm -hmm. as one of the founders of Liquipedia I think that uh, it's really important that all the other organizations out there do take note of this because if esports does get large enough, uh, some of the larger photo organizations will just start sending out cease and desist letters and bills for that kind of thing, just taking photos off of websites. So, By the way, while we're on the subject of uh, organizations, I want a quick off-topic interjection. Please, 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 please stop using LED panels right in the player's faces. <laughs> Yeah. LED. <laughs> wait, 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 what now? <laughs> like, these little tiny boxes that are, are grids of LEDs that they use. Oh, okay. Grids yeah, of LEDs? Those, those are harsh light for everybody. Like, the best way to do it is just line the ceiling of the booths with white paper, reflective, whatever, and then and then basically bounce light off of that. It'll be better for everybody, it'll get less oh, glare, I see what you players mean. will yeah. be less annoyed, and everything, 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 everything will be better. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah you're... Yeah, it's for lighting, right? Just yeah. yeah. Purely, yeah, got it. Yeah, got help it. us help you. Yeah, help, help us help, us help you. you. Oh, Kevin, your, your uh, camera's frozen, so... I, it, okay. And I want to just restart did, the did camera. We answer the, did we answer his question? I um, don't have a question. You I don't think Robbie had a question, actually. Uh, so, just... thank, so thank you for having this conversation, and thank you for having me on the call. You guys are running a great show. Okay, no <laughs> problem. You. All right, thanks, thanks bud. All right, Ghost Claw. All right, I need to switch over here in a second, but why don't we wrap things up? And, uh, you know, I think this, I think today's show has been really, really great. You know, I, again, you know, we'll be doing more of these kind of photography shows in the future for sure. But, you know, I think this was a good one to get things started, get some discussion started. Um, you know, a big thanks to all you folks that have been watching, you know, just given that the Vengeance thing has been going on. It's not bad timing. I didn't actually, I didn't, it didn't put two and two together until I realized, oh, 
crap, we have the we have the actual show on the twenty sixth when I when uh, they were piecing that that thing together. But um, you know, big thanks to you guys for watching and and obviously you folks for coming on and and uh, you know being the guests on the show. But I kind of want to go into shout outs. If you guys have any thank yous and shout outs you guys want to do, uh, why don't we start with you, Carlton? Um, first of all, like, I definitely want to thank ESFI, especially Anne uh, Hubbub, who like really helped me get my start like with ESFI. Uh, I met her at Columbus last year, and then the first shot, uh, the first event I shot for them was uh, IPL four. I had a machine so, like so, since sorry, then. Sorry, Everybody's frozen right now, oh. <laughs> except for <laughs> me, John, and Helena. I don't know why, but. Uh, uh, so yeah, I gotta uh, thank Hubwub and Brent and like everybody at ESFI, Yosef, like Justin, like everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna give Shashi a th- uh, shout out, even though he doesn't deserve it, but I'll give him one anyway. He, he definitely does not Ouch. deserve it. No, Ouch. no, I, I want, I want to clarify, he does not deserve it, but he'll get it. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, like it, everybody that's helped me along the way. I mean, uh, Katie from MLG has helped me out with passes. Um, everybody at mm-hmm. IPL has been awesome. Um, uh, and ESL crew has been great at events. So just like everybody that's helped me get to the point that I'm at, um, Gome crew for being really awesome when I was in Korea. Uh, everybody in this room for just like being a sounding board when we talk about photography all the time. All right, uh, Helena, you want to go next? Yeah, I think I just want to thank actually DreamHack and Robert particularly for Robert. introducing me to the right people and. Uh, being his uh, crazy self, uh, which makes everyone's else life a lot more, most, uh, a lot more funny. <laughs> a lot more funny. That's an yeah. understatement for Robert. <laughs> Robert funny. Uh, he's a good guy. Okay, awesome. Uh, Kevin, you want to go? Um, sure, I guess so. I, I guess I really need to thank Team Liquid, uh, particularly Victor, uh, Ken, and James for you know, having me on board and take, taking photos for them and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's, it's a decent amount of exposure. That's right now the biggest thing right now. And I'd also like to thank my uh, my day job, the one I'm at right now, Barricade Networks, uh, mostly for listening when I told them to start investing in esports because we're now sponsoring Team Liquid. Yeah, that's and, pretty cool. And we're, I'm pretty sure we're looking for other stuff as well. I didn't know you worked for Barracuda. Okay, cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, Jin, any shout outs you want to do? Um, to my team, Infinity Seven, and then Osborne says DBNR, it's two series, GG Well Played for supporting us, and also EJ and Day Night for hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always good. It's always good. Yeah. And oh, I was going to say, vote for her for the Times Square theme, but it's already over. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the nice. Uh, good stuff. I gotta give one last shout out to uh, TC. They know who they are. TC. Okay. TC. John. I'd like uh, to shout out to Carlton and well, all of you for coming on here because mm-hmm. um, this may not be Thank something you. you're used to, just being kind of front and center in front of everyone. You're behind a camera a yeah. lot, so. Um, we uh, actually kudos. prefer to be on the other side of the camera, believe it or not. Well, kudos to you guys for for appearing on the show. Um, wanted to thank uh, somebody that has constantly gotten on me and, and kept me honest with with my use of the photography, which is um, uh, just it's just a tank. Or John, I, I I believe he's still with Team Liquid. At least that's what I have him annotated in is in Skype. Uh, but him and Carlton have been very good at at, at letting me know uh, when. Um, when I'm using things that I should, you know, remember to um, uh, to to credit, um, because I'm just as guilty as the rest of the organizations at doing it. So uh, I really appreciate that, and um, a shout out to all of those that are still uh, kind of um, waiting for me to get uh, any side projects or anything going. I appreciate your patience, and that's about it. And thanks, Chris, for a great show. He's doing stuff, guys. He's doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so big thanks again to the four of you guys and Carlton again for you, you know, us having that you know, that conversation in, in Vegas and really being the seed for this episode. Um, you know, I felt felt like this we you know what needed to be discussed today was was pretty much discussed at least starting this this uh, this discussion and and Helena and Kevin, you know, really meeting you guys through this really. I've you know never really talked to you guys before, so it's been a real pleasure and. And hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get to talk some more in the future. And Jen, of course, having you on again. And uh, thanks for doing this. It's always uh, it's always a pleasure. 
and see shoutouts. Any more shoutouts I have for the so I, big shoutouts to the mods. Um, there's something I forgot last time. I can't remember again. Oh my god, so terrible. Uh, let's see, and I just big shout out to the viewers. Um, so the vods for the show it's going to be up uh, pretty much right after the show. I'm just going to start uploading it. Uh, so it'll probably take like 30, 30 minutes to an hour to, and it'll it'll be available on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash/ChamianV. And uh, next week, next Tuesday, 4 p.m., same time. Hopefully no vengeance, though. Um, we'll have uh, Sundance Yu Giovanni from MLG talk about the Winter Championship and uh, all the goodness that's going to be associated with it. So tune in for that and have your questions ready. But for now, we got something special coming up hey, right here. Yeah. Will we have, when will we do we get Paul back? Oh, yeah, Paul. Everybody's asking about Paul. So Paul was originally supposed to be back next week, with, and Carmack was supposed to be involved too, but unfortunately they're going to be at CBIT, and they don't have good internet there, um, Carmack confirmed. So he won't be back next week. He'll be back the following week when we have uh, Kim Rahm on. So, yes, he is going to be back, and he'll tell you his stories with uh, his, his setting up internet in Germany. That's been the major reason why he hasn't been on uh, the last month. <laughs> I mean, it's been like a month, right, at least. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, he'll be back soon. He, you know, you'll see him soon. But All right, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Uh, Chain Man Thanks B for having us on. Clark, no problem. We'll uh, we're signing off. But check this out. Check what we got going right now. Where is it? Where is it? Darn it. I got to get used to using this. Here we go. Yeah. Oops. Oh, nice. It's going to cover up my face. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool?